is up everybody welcome back to the channel another live stream coming at you from north texas hope everybody is having a wonderful wednesday afternoon 12 noon top of the morning top of the afternoon to my central america time zone located viewers and good evening to a lot of you out there in uh, europe and over on that part of the world it is about 8 p.m your time i think depending on where you are so glad to have everybody on board today a little bit unanticipated stream i was actually supposed to be working today uh, my trip was cut short a little bit, so I am back, and we are going to take full advantage of this, and we're going to do another flight in the Delta, very much anticipated flight Elder Jets A320 down to South Florida. Now, originally, I had to set up to fly into Miami. I have both the Latin VFR sceneries for Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale looks much better, in my personal opinion. I want to go to Fort Lauderdale. So we've kind of modified the flight. We're going to do uh, Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale. We do have more failure simulations coming at you today. So I want to tell you what we have in store. Right now, uh, we have everything is pretty much normal. Random faults have been enabled. They're in normal mode. But what's going to happen is I'm thinking uh, top of climb will trigger a fault and then we're also going to trigger a fault here at the gate and we're going to just see what happens uh, if we have maintenance or if when, whenever we discover it we discover it so we have some more fault situations happening and then i also have a fault uh that has to do with cabin pressurization that we're going to get into because that's a, actually a popular one popular one that you see on recurrent and i've done it in the embraer 175 i actually had to uh, do manual pressurization control i've never had to do it in the airbus so we're going to tackle that today as well a little bit for my own uh refresher and for you guys to just come along and see what else we can study 
in this study level A320. So I hope everybody is uh, is ready to get going here. Anderson, good to see you, Sue. Uh, good to see you, sir. Fubar, good to see you. Digital Merc, what's up, man? Good to see you. Juan Andres, what is up, man? Good to see you. And yes, we are headed south. So if you are getting ready to tune in for the South America tour, we are continuing our trek down the eastern seaboard. We started in Philly. We're in Atlanta now. We're going to be in Miami, South Florida today. The next stream... We're going to start, it's the next stream is the official pre-launch stream. We're going to go to Cancun uh, out of Miami. And then from Cancun, I haven't decided where we're going, either Guatemala or uh, or Honduras or something like that yet. But that's that will officially kick off tomorrow. Um, and then that, that's going to be a lot of fun. So I can't wait to be flying all over South America. We're going to be both in the Phoenix and the PMDG 737s. This is just, just what a time to be a simmer. So, John, good to see you, sir. Welcome on board. Scott, good to see you. Stephen Hayner, what is up, everybody? Welcome. All right. Let's go ahead and do this, shall we? Should we get this airplane fired up? I think we should. I think we should. Just in time. Music is fading out. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling good. This is going to be a lot of fun. You just finished the green hydraulic video, Steen? Well, welcome aboard, man. Thank you for watching that. Guys, I do want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Uh, I've had a lot of... Let me get out of the... Uh, out of the uh, outside view there. I've had a lot of watchbacks, right? I guess I really don't know what, what you would call that, but a lot of people are watching the streams even post live and you guys are just killing it. You're, you're awesome for the channel. Thank you for the likes and thank you for the uh, new subscriptions. I'm glad you guys have found this content useful and you're enjoying this type of stuff. So without further ado, let's at least get this started. So I'm gonna do something here, like I said, we're just gonna go to the faults. I haven't done anything but turn the uh, GPU on. We're gonna go to the configuration and we're gonna go random failures. And I'm just gonna trigger one right now. We don't know what it is. We don't know what happens. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see it on our pre-flight. This is just part of the deal. If we have to come back to the gate and do maintenance, we'll do that. But we have something triggered. I have no idea what it is. You guys saw me do it live. So let's just pretend that never happened and we're at the aircraft and we're going to go ahead and get this here. Well, I can tell you right now what it is. <laughs> you guys see a problem with this? Okay. Well, you could do PFD ND transfer. Uh, you could actually dispatch without a PFD. Um, I personally don't really want to fly like this. <laughs> so let's not do that one, shall we? Let's go back here. Let's go back to our uh, maintenance. Uh, let's go into our failures. And let's go ahead and look at indicating and recording. What do we have failed in here? Captain PFD. Let's go ahead and how do I not fail that? Let me go back here. Maybe maintenance. <laughs> ground service nope uh, let's see uh, can we fix that surely we can fix that uh, maintenance is available request maintenance on air no I don't need it on air I need it on my in my PFD all right let's get to that when we get it um, let's continue with our power up though let's say we get to the airplane we're ready to go here I'm gonna power on battery one Battery two, remember we're kind of in that turnaround state with just the GPU on, that is fine. Up the captain's overhead, we'll get our crew supply on. I'll do the ground control push button so we can record our activities here. We'll go with a CVR test. That's normal, that APU firelight, that was the part of the uh, batteries coming online. So here we go, one. Just click the orange failure, it turns white. It's fixed. Yeah, I saw that, uh, but I, it didn't work for the random one, which is interesting. I, I, I don't know if we're always stuck with it on for the duration of the flight. We'll see. We'll see if we can fix it. If not, I mean, it's not the end of the world. We can fly with a PFD out. It's just not very fun, but I've done it. I've done it in the real life. I've done it in air. I've done it in the Airbus, so it can happen. Oops, didn't mean to deploy that sunshade. Let's continue with our flow here. Nav is in position when everything else is off. We'll get no smoking auto. Arm the emergency exit lights. Landing elevation is in auto position. That looks good. Packs are looking good. We've got the two fault lights there. That's normal. Electric is good. Fire test engine one. Engine two. And we'll simulate FO already did his up the maintenance side here. Cargo heat, that's fine. We'll just keep it there. That's fine. All right, everything else looks good on that panel. Obviously, my PFD is not working. So maintenance is... Request maintenance on air. Auto flight. 
communication. Oh, I see. It was indicating indicating systems, wasn't it? Indicating recording. There we go. <laughs> Maintenance is coming. Look at this. I've never seen this. Maintenance is that maintenance is at the aircraft. So uh, we need to call Delta Jets operations. We call up Delta Ops on two. Be like, hey, ops. Uh, yeah, we got a. We need to have maintenance come out here. We got a PFD that's in op. Like, okay, copy that. Uh, then they'll send the maintenance mechanic down, and they're diagnosing the problem. I'm going to continue with everything else. Hey, Cap, do we need to hold boarding for that? No, I don't think we're going to need to hold boarding. Let's go ahead and just uh, start loading the aircraft. We'll do real time. 26 minutes. Our off block is at 12:45 local. So, uh, boarding has begun. Fueling will show up here. Everything else is good. They're still diagnosing the maintenance down there. I'm going to continue just doing my regular set up here in the cockpit let's go ahead and initialize the flight uh we'll go back i'm gonna leave that over there just because i want to leave i should have put maintenance on this side it's all right but let's go ahead and uh we'll get data link going over here we'll pull our flight plan out from sim brief oh i think it's done what do we got item under repair do you captain pfd this is so cool i've never seen that <laughs> this is cool they're repairing it this is so cool all right, so we still, this is, and this is how you work around. You know, sometimes if the mechanic is sitting in my seat, I'll just sit out in the jet bridge. The FO will set up the aircraft. We'll go ahead and do a data request, but not a big deal at all. Hopefully they can fi fix it here at the gate. We don't have to go with an MEL. All right, that's us, Delta 357, Atlanta to Lauderdale. Let's go to our initialization. We'll pull it from there. That should pull our data. Item is still under repair. Okay, and we are operating as Delta Jets 357. We already got a PDC, which is awesome. We're going to go cost index of 88. Our cruise altitude that we filed today was 370. So we'll put that in there. That looks good. IRS init align on ref. We can confirm that. So I'm basically just I'm simulating being the FO right now uh, while maintenance is doing their thing. Have I uh, fly the real Airbus since the Phoenix was released? Yeah, Kevin, I did. I actually just got back from a trip yesterday. So I've been out on the line flying it. Uh, but here we are. It's, there's something about this airplane, man, that uh, I just can't get enough of it. So right now, information Oscar is current. They're departing runways. Let's see. Winds are 100 at 13, gusts 2-1, 10 miles overcast. What do we have? What do we have? Uh, blah, blah, blah. It says approaches. I don't know. I imagine I missed right. Oscar. Doesn't say which runway to expect. But if they're blasting off eights. Oh, here we go. Departing eight right. Expect Arnov off the ground. Departing nine left. So eights and nines. So with eights and nines, let's go ahead and pull up our Jeppesan. Sin City, what's up, man? Welcome to the string, dude. Ooh, we'd like to do uh, nine left for departure because we're going southbound, so you probably wouldn't get eight right because you're going southbound. They don't want you crossing over, so nine left would be most common. So let's head back over here. We're doing this from the FO seat, so we're going to depart a niner left. On, we're on the Smiltz, 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 Smiltz 3 RNAV out to a wallet transition. And then from there, we're going to Zeppelin. So we'll insert that. There is Zeppelin. From Zeppelin, we pick up the Tiki 2 into Fort Lauderdale. I'm not quite sure what to expect in Lauderdale yet. I'm going to be optimistic, and let's just say we get 10 left today. But we'll have to look at that when we get a little bit closer. A little bit longer in route, but that's fine because, like I said, we have multiple failures we're going to be working through today. So a little bit more time to sit up there and diagnose the problem. Uh, if you're just tuning in, we've got 300 viewers are watching. Just to give you a quick uh, update what's happening, we've got maintenance repairing one fault already. We triggered a random fault before we sat down. We're going to trigger a random fault as soon as we reach top of climb. We're going to deal with it, whatever it is, when we get there. And we also have a pressurization fault armed that I personally want to work through and show you guys on stream. So we're going to have multiple, multiple levels of faults and failures going on today. So I appreciate y'all tuning in, and that's why I'm sitting in the FO seat right now. It's because I'm out in the jet bridge sipping my coffee while the mechanic is in my seat trying to fix the PFD. All right, uh, Tiki 2 RNAV from the Zeppelin transition. You know what's funny is I actually just flew to Lauderdale the other day.
Why is there no Zeppelin? Oh, there is no. Tiki 2 off the Zeppelin. Insert. That's fine. Uh, Tiki 2. I guess we're going Zeppelin. Direct Tiki. We'll clear the disco. Insert that. That looks good. All right. That is set. We'll do our secondary flight plan initialization. We're just, remember, we're going Atlanta, Atlanta here in case we have to come back, in case we pop a motor. Atlanta, Atlanta is here. Secondary, all we care about is the perf. Atlanta, arrival. I'm going to come right back around to nine left. Secondary, perf. Next phase, next phase, next phase. Approach is, let's see, temperature is 2-1 on the ECAM. I don't want any wind benefit there to help me out. I want uh, just worst case scenario, tailwind or zero wind. Q&H is 2-9 or 9 or 1. Last I checked. Uh, barrel, I don't want to look it up, so we're just going to put 200 in the DH. Should be close enough. That is set for our secondary. Nothing to hard tune on the RadNav page. The initialization page B, we are waiting for that. I guess prog page, this is for the FO side. We'll leave it We'll let it do its thing here. I'm going to go ahead and put you back there. Oh, look. Hey, Captain, we got you all squared away here. If you could uh, just go ahead and look at the logbook for me, make sure we have it signed off. So at this point, I'll take the logbook. I'll have wrote, I'll probably written up something in the aircraft logbook. Um, and just like real life, I'm going to drop this down. So whenever there's a mechanical item or something irregular, I always drop this to make sure I ch double check all my bases before uh, I push off the gate. That's why I bring this down. So I have this down because the mechanic at this point in real life would probably take the aircraft logbook and he would disappear. He'd go down to the mechanic office or wherever, they're, wherever they do their thing and they have to write exactly what they did in the book uh, to fix the airplane. And at that point, everything in the airplane is normal now except I don't have the aircraft logbook which is a required document. I cannot push off the gate without it so I'm gonna just simulate that we're gonna leave that down right now we'll pretend that maintenance has the logbook but the PFD does appear to be fixed so that's beautiful we'll go ahead and just continue operating here so I'll co I'll get out of this page I don't need it let's go back to our flight plan and uh, let's just go ahead and continue programming the box like I said so we're basically at the prog page we'll put ATL in here just for a quick and dirty bearing distance Perf data, uh, we're going to load that later. Init B is what we're set on. So we have 15.8. That looks like our fuel required, right? So let's go back and see what's going on here. Mass and balance or weight and balance. Uh, we got 154.45 boarded. We got 15.8 in tanks. That is what we need. So let's go ahead and double check, make sure that it is balanced, which it is. 63.90 across the board. We'll go ahead and get our fuel pumps on. And at that point, we'll turn the seatbelt side on. And we are just boarding with fuel tanks, and he's gone. Everything is looking good. What's the condition out here? Now, guys, I wanted to show you something cool. I'll get ready to be mind blown here for a second. All right. Now, I haven't personally tested this, but I was told this from my buddy Phantom. And if, this if it doesn't work, I'm going to be mad, and we can all blame Phantom. But. He said that the windows actually work as far as cooling the cockpit. So if you look here, our cockpit is at 30 C. It's hot in here. Real life, if I don't have APU or conditioned air, I'm going to open the window. Let's open the window and see if it actually cools the cockpit. So we hit the latch and then we slide the window back. We actually have to manually slide this. Oh, that's awesome. All right, it's back on the gust lock. Look at that, guys. Cockpit temp has immediately dropped three degrees, and it's continuing to drop. Can I get a like button for simulating the temperature of the cockpit with the cockpit window? This is, this is next level stuff, guys. I've said this before. <laughs> I've said this before. This airplane, when you fire up your Phoenix A320, you are not just loading up something that is a, a face value airplane and you have normal operation. We are, there is some in-depth stuff modeled on this airplane. So we got the cockpit door open. We're cooling the cabin down. Or sorry, we're cooling the cockpit down. Uh, we're not going to start the APU just yet. It's still a little bit early. I'm going to go ahead and reset that clock there until we're ready to get off block. But that looks good. So Let's go ahead and do the rest of our checks here. We're going to check the engine page. Make sure we do have oil here. So we've got, our, we've got plenty of oil for the flight. That looks good. <laughs> Fighter says this is the new benchmark. It is. Yep. <laughs> totally juicy, Key6. 
Uh, let's see. Bleed page here. We're not going to worry about that. Pressurization. Want to make sure it's an auto. I can't lower my view for some reason, but it is an auto. I can see it there. It looks like landing field elevation is zero. We're landing in Lauderdale, so that's correct. And when it is an auto, that is something important to always check. And you want to check your hydraulics. Make sure we're green across the board, which we are. So we got one, two, and three is all set. And we already checked our fuel page, so everything looks good there as far as uh, prelim stuff. I guess let's take a look at our SID which we can't really do it. This is where I'd actually have to take my iPad off the window. Uh, well, it's kind of weird doing it like that, but I guess we'll put in our squat code from ATC. Let's take a look at that first. By the way, I confirm that cockpit windows don't open at cruise, guessing because of the pressure differential. Yes, <laughs> Jeff, that's good, man. And that's uh, very true to real life. And we're gonna talk about it here in just a second because I get that question a lot. Let me get my squat code in here from uh, clearance. So we're clear to Lauderdale. As filed, the Smelts 2 wallet, Zeppelin Tiki 2, maintain 10,000. So we'll put 10,000 in the window up here. 10,000 is set. Expect 370 10 minutes after departure. Departure control is offline. Squawk 7230. So we'll squawk 7230 is set. Expect runway assignment, other information at VATSIM, blah, blah, blah. Call it, a, call it appropriate end of ramp with spot number and ATIS. Perfect. We can do it. We have the equipment to do that. All right, so let's talk about window and opening it in flight, and, and this same goes for for doors. So, uh, where is? Let's go look at a let's go look at a cabin door real quick here. All right, so this is an emergency exit door here in a 320. Um, I don't know how what the surface area is, but we're going to talk about this. So, when the aircraft is pressurized, uh, generally it's probably close to nine pounds per square inch, okay? Now you have to remember that these doors on modern aircraft are plug style doors. So they basically do not fit this direction going out. You cannot physically pull this door out of the airplane from the outside. You have to turn it in order to get the door out, to get it to fit. They're designed that way. And you can see it even shows you on the emergency exit opening. You see how you this gentleman here opens the latch, boom, boom turn the door sideways and then chuck it out chuck it out the uh, hole because there's no other way to get the door out so and this is the same on old all doors and windows on modern aircraft they're plug style okay so now that we know that's a plug style door can we open them in flight the answer is no it's it's virtually physically impossible think about nine pounds per square inch pressurization this door is probably let me get my calculator here so i say what maybe two and a half feet across, so that's 36 inches, okay, and probably uh, f four and a half feet along, so what would that be? That's uh, 12, let's just say 48 times 48, okay, that's roughly 1,800. Multiply that by nine pounds per square inch, you're looking at over 16,000 pounds of pressure to open this door. So if you can lift 16,000 pounds towards your own body, have at it then you can open the door in flight but it is i mean the handles would break before you could do that okay if you applied 16,000 pounds of pressure once like you just it's not possible so that is why it is physically impossible to open doors and windows in flight a lot of people get nervous about that um there's been a lot of passenger disturbances in in real life you know where people say oh he's been trying to open the door they can't they, were, they can't get the door open you physically will not be able to get the door open so as long as you're pressurized anyway, and because of the plug style. So, uh, but that is why you can't open this door in flight. Now you can open the direct vision vi window at a certain pressurization and use it to fly out. So if you have a destroyed windscreen or you went through hail and you cannot see, this also happens in real life sometimes, very rare. But if you destroyed your windshield because of hail, you can't do an auto land or whatnot, there is actually a speed limitation on the window where you can open your window below a certain altitude and uh, a certain speed and you can physically look out the window and land the airplane if you need to. So it can be done. I'm not saying it's impossible, but as far as normal operation, you know, you're not going to be able to open <laughs> open anything. Uh, okay, where are we at? Everything else looks good here. We are about, let's see, 45 is our off block. I would like to push at 10 early, which would be 35. So about four minutes, we'll start the APU. We have a company message. This is our preliminary data. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll go AOC received messages unless you're mike tyson yeah unless you're mike tyson on a jet blue mint flight going to london right 
He might be able to do it. Here we go. Here's our preliminary load sheet. Uh, land at Fort Lauderdale. Take off weight. Yeah. Max zero fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Potable water. Everything looks good. The only thing that I really want to see. Fuel in tanks right there. 15.8. We got proper fuel. I'll accept the prelim. Now, the whole preliminary load sheet thing is uh, it's a pretty cool stimulation. But in real life, I don't run prelim numbers just because the way our companies do it here in the U.S., a lot of it is just all through Aerodata and through ACARS. A lot of airlines pay for the same function. Basically, what happens is we put in our final numbers when we get a headcount from the uh, from the gate agent. Or not a headcount, but when she's physically done boarding, she knows how many people got on the airplane. We send all that stuff off. We send the data away, and then it comes back, and it will populate all of our perf speeds and uh, our flap setting and all that. Now, where I will send preliminary data, and I will try to get performance data preliminary or preliminary pre performance data, is uh, if you're in an area where performance is going to be of question. Maybe you're doing a super high density altitude takeoff, or you're doing a uh, high density altitude terrain, and you really want to run some numbers and see what the airplane is going to be looking at uh, for your runway and your second segment climb and all that. Then I will send prelim. But on a day to day base, Taken off out of Atlanta, nah, yeah, I'm not going to send for prelim data. All I care about is the final load sheet, right? Because that's what we have on board. I do also fly NEOs, exactly. Uh, here we go. Let's go ahead and fire up the APU, shall we? Let's go ahead and go here. And I saw XP72 stopping by in chat. Good to see you, sir, in, in the chat, XP. Guys, if you are... If you haven't heard of it already, XP72 and Blue Games have a podcast on Thursdays called The Blue Experience. I was uh, honored to be the first guest uh, first guest on that program, I don't know, almost a year ago now. There's a flap open message. We'll go ahead and fire it up. And we talked about the Phoenix. We talked about all things Flight Sim. And the best part is they've invited me back tomorrow. So tomorrow, I believe it's going to be... Correct me, XP, if you're still here. 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, probably 5 p.m. Central for my time. If the change, if, as soon as they get it posted, I will actually post something in the community tab for you. But I am honored to be invited back on the uh, podcast, and we'll be talking all things Phoenix. We'll talk about study level. I did hear Mr. Blue Games say that the Phoenix is not a study level airplane. He said there's no study level airplane. So, Mr. Blue Games, good sir. I'd love to. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk more about that, but. Um, the Two awesome guys, awesome flight simmers, uh, good streamers, good content creators. So I hope you guys will tune in tomorrow. That will be on the Blue Games channel or on XP72. I believe they multi-stream the podcast. So should be fun. Ed Reed, what's going on, sir? Welcome aboard. When possible, would you be able to explain the Pratt & Whitney motors are superior to the CFM Leap Neo? I know it has something to do with dual cooling, but not much beyond that. Kevin Thomas, great question. Of course, remember me saying that they are superior to CFM Leaps is, of course, a personal opinion, but I do base it on a couple of facts that you can't argue. Number one, they sound cooler. Number two, you have dual cooling, so you get to push a button, an extra button, and you get to motor both engines at the same time, like 777s and A350s, so that's cool. Number three they uh they're bigger they're the actual fan diameter is a little bit just a little bit bigger so bigger is better those are my personal reasons of why i say the pratts are superior to the leaps now again personal opinion is what it is but for me absolutely t brecht welcome to private pilot sir glad to have you on board the channel man welcome aboard all right, we are about this about three minutes. Let's go ahead and get the bleed on. At this point, hopefully, the maintenance guy comes back and he says, hey, Cap, we just finished up the uh, logbook. Uh, it should be signed off, good to go. So I'll take a look at the logbook, and I'll make sure it's been signed off, proper signature and all that, say, all right, we're good to go. So we'll go ahead and close that. We've got the logbook on board. Uh, now we're just waiting to finish up boarding, which we've got only about... 30 people to go. We're looking good. We are looking real good. We'll get that on. We'll get constraint mode on. And we have information Oscar, which is 3015. I've set that twice by the magic key. You can see we're on a little bit newer 320 today. We've been retrofitted with the uh, ISIS or ISIS, which is the Integrated Standby Instrument System. And this is not just an attitude indicator. It actually has an LS on there. You could fly an ILS on there. You could set, uh, you could set V speeds on here if you do, which I don't hardly ever do that. Um, but you could set that, you could set your uh, decision height and, and everything else. So, I mean, you can literally fly an ILS 
with v-speeds right here um, if you're doing that you're having a very bad day but it is possible it is modeled it is simulated good to see that here Junar, what's going on man welcome on board the stream sir glad to have you on board has there ever been a case where you needed to do a tech stop in the real aircraft what goes into a tech stop what do you mean tech stop you mean a diversion for maintenance absolutely i, I have to do uh for maintenance i've probably only had to do a handful most diversions that i encounter and, and i would say the most common diversion that you encounter in real life is for weather weather reasons uh you know your weather moves into a part of the country and you're just you're just blocked off you can't get through it so you'll hold for a little bit and then run out of fuel or you run out of hold fuel we divert to a different station and, and get gas and go back so most diversions i would say are weather driven but yeah i've had a handful that are uh mechanical irregularities or return to gates indeed milltown we are going toga okay so we are about seven minutes until we're about ready to get out of here let me go and finish our takeoff perf we're going to go ahead and pull this up here in hot lanta does the auto land on 320 control rudder uh and wheel as in does land the stand center line or is it pilot intervention david so uh great question in fact it does control the center line after touchdown and what it's tracking is that localizer beam right so it's maintaining uh that localizer beam dead center even on the rollout that is why it's very important that you disconnect the autopilot before you attempt to turn off the runway because what happens in this in the sim it's kind of hard to uh, do because you might push on the rudder pedal which then your rudder input will break the autopilot and you'll have an autopilot disconnect and i shouldn't say break but i mean like disconnect the autopilot it, it physically turns it off that's one way to disengage the autopilot not recommended but it will happen uh, so what what we do in real life normally we grab the tiller to turn off the runway right so let's say we just did an auto land we're rolling out the autopilot is still engaged because we did the auto land i grab the tiller over here to start turning off the runway well what's the airplane going to do it's going to see the localizer starting to come drift off so it's going to try to correct me and if you let go of that tiller or you, or you uh, just ease up on the tiller it's going to immediately try to steer back to the right to maintain dead center on the low so ask me how i know it's very important that you disengage the autopilot after you do a uh, cat 3 auto land lucas what's up man thank you so much for the uh 35 dollar uh, dono there i'm not quite sure what uh what try's are but thank you nonetheless uh is your graphic at max yes we're running ultra settings across the board with just a few things turned down like lod i think is at 200 um, and a couple other things basically i'm running what q8 pilot has in sim update 9 video I'm, I'm basically running exactly what he has there if you want to take a look at that but uh nine or left is what we're planning right so nine left for departure surface is dry optimum force toga yes anti-ice off packs on uh we'll sync from the prelim just to see here and let's go ahead and sync live weather 3014 and we'll do a quick calculatore Again, I'm not going to load this in because this is a prelim, but you could see here. It looks like we're doing a flaps two takeoff with down point two, 2020 on the thrust reduction acceleration. That looks normal. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to put it in the box. Why create an extra step for yourself when you don't need it? So it's just good to see what we have. All right. We can expect flap, flap two. Let's look at our actual SID real quick. Make sure there's no restrictions on the SID. We have, I think I already started. Yes, the smelts two are now. Let's pull that up. Exclamation point specs, Airborne Geek will give you everything you need to know, my friend. All right, going off nines, it's simple, out to grit. Speed restriction, accelerate to 250. We can do that, no problem. Uh, Heisman at 250 knots, that's the only restriction going eastbound all the way out to wallet. So pretty simple, Sid. Nothing to uh, be concerned about. Boarding is complete. We'll go ahead and dismiss that. Sounds like they just closed the cabin door. I hate how they do that. I thought I turned that off. I wanted to do manual. I hate how it pulls it from you um okay that's fine let's go back to atlanta and let's just look at our ground charts oh i didn't star that one i guess random failure sums up my college career all right uh, as far as our taxi out we can expect Niner left, uh, we'll call them here, we're at four south, we can expect something like either Lima full length or Lima Lima four Mike, any combination, basically right turn all the way to nine left. Uh, it is possible to do a Mike two departure there, we'll see if, what, what we get from air traffic control. But 
As far as our taxi, that's considered brief. Our perf data is up here now. Oh, that's the landing. Wrong one, excuse me. Perf takeoff. We'll pull that back up. We're waiting on the final load sheet, but we can get ready to push. We need to close up the doors as well. So let's come over here to the Phoenix menu. Ground handling. Yeah, I, I meant to disable it. I thought I did. I really thought I did. I guess I didn't. We'll go ahead and pull chocks and cones and... There we go. Good to disconnect power. That's the sound it makes. It's like... All right, you're cool. Pull the uh, ground power. That can come off. Let me just double check. Everything looks good. We are loaded. Perfect. Uh, zero fuel weight, 128.8 with 30.8. Unfortunately, have to get out of here as I work nights and have to get to bed. Looking forward to watching the rest of the stream later and cannot wait for the podcast. Blessing, Captain. See ya. Sid City, dude, thank you so much for the $15 dono there. Bank angle check right back at you, sir. Very much appreciative of that. Uh, cannot wait to have the podcast tomorrow. Yes, sir, it'll be a lot of fun. Hope you stop by. Thank you again for your continued support. Get some rest, my friend. We'll always have a replay available. All right, are you guys ready? Let's do a before start check and get out of here. Window stores and slides, they are not armed yet. Let's go beacon on. Stand by. Stand by on the before start check. Matter of fact, we'll get our transponder on for uh, VATSIM as well. We'll go above mode, TIRA 7320 Traffic. is set. Traffic. Interesting. Shouldn't get that on now, should be TA only. Oh, he just departed, cool. Somebody just departed? I don't have any, uh, oh yeah, there he goes. I don't have any uh, Atlanta scenery because I really don't like flying in and out of here all that much. All right, windows. Oh, we got to do our V speed still. I think we can do it on the. Uh, I think we have it over here on our EFB though. We'll do sync final load sheet. There we go. Calculate. Would you be able to do a NIT-B based on prelim load sheet and leave it for the final numbers or within tolerance? Uh, you could, but why would you do it twice, uh, simple takeoffs? Because they're almost never exactly the same. I'd say they're almost never exactly the same. So I just leave it blank. That way when I put it in, I know it's the right one. 25, 30, 34, flaps to toga. 25, 30, 34. 125, 130, 134. Flaps to toga packs on. Before start checklist, windows on slides closed on. Beacon on. Thrust levers idle. Parking brake. It is on for now. Before start checklist is complete. Cool. Cockpit to ground. Cockpit to ground. Cockpit to ground. You guys down there? Cockpit to ground. Ah, oh, he's just hooking up the tug now. <laughs> Billy, Billy, what's up, man? Thank you so much for the uh, two pound donut. Appreciate it. it. Says thanks for all. Thanks for. Thanks for all that you do. Love your videos. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate that, sir. Very kind of you. Thank you for that dono, man. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. XP, I was just talking about the podcast tomorrow. Is that, uh, are we set 6 Eastern? Is it 6 Eastern? I'll make a post too after this. <laughs> Captain, you there? Ah, uh, cockpit to ground. How are you guys doing? Uh, we're all hooked up down here. Walk around's complete and we are ready for brake release. Copy that. Brakes release. You are clear to push. Copy. Commencing pushback. How common are takeoffs with flaps greater than one? Uh, Phoenix suggests high flaps a lot. Oh man, I couldn't tell you, Mark. It's so different. It really just depends. Um, I I couldn't I couldn't begin to tell you which is. Oh no, I don't want to go that way. I'll go that way. It is all dependent upon so many different factors. Cam, what's going on, man? Welcome to the stream. I am using the MFG Crosswind rudder pedals. MFG Crosswinds. Wojtek, what's going on, man? Thank you for the $5 donor, man. I appreciate that. In Atlanta and also Los Angeles Tower will say clear for takeoff. Runway uh, 9 left, RNAV grits. Am I puzzled? Why well, I mentioned the first point? Uh, let me stop this and I'll answer that. We'll go ahead and stop. Push back complete, set brakes. Brakes set. Here we go, guys. Look at this. 
they're not clear to disconnect. Accumulator pressure is out of the green. So this is my, as a captain flow, that's like, boom, brake set, my eyes come here. Well, they're not good to disconnect. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the electric pump and it should pressurize the accumulator. There it goes. You see that? It happened slowly, but there it is. It had a little bit faster in real life. Brakes are set, clear, disconnect. Show me the pin out front. Thanks for the smooth push. We're starting one and two. Cap that cap. Have a good day. Tug, tow, and a salute. Go ahead and start engine one. Ignition goes to ignition start. And enjoy the startup. And Voitech, I will get to you or question right after the startup. I don't know why the startup sounds are so quiet, but here we go. Starting one. Take a listen. I mean, it's there. I wish it was about five times louder, even if it's not that realistic. I think it's got a pretty realistic volume. Uh, I just, you know, for sim purposes. I love my sounds, gotta juice it up, right? Uh, good question though, Wojtek, he asked, why do they say that first point? So that's technically the proper way to do it. Uh, I believe the FAA changed that. We're starting to, by the way. PTU's kicking on, that's proper. Uh, masters are no longer split with the park brake set. With the park brake set and the engine master split, the PTU is inhibited. As soon as I sync up the masters, the PTU will kick on. And you hear it, that's why you hear it go on after you move the uh, start switch. Uh, but the, that is the proper way to denote, uh, it's just they came out with that rule. It's one of the more recent rules, I think within the last couple of years. But when you're on an RNAV departure with an RNAV point, Technically, by the book, you're supposed to say RNAV grits, nine left, clear for takeoff, or RNAV, uh, RNAV T-Rex, one seven, center, one seven right, clear for takeoff at a DFW. You're, they're supposed to tell you that first point because you want to verify that on your ND, make sure you do have the right runway. You know, you have a lot of parallel runways, a lot of different RNAV departures. Sometimes you get a runway change. It's just one extra step to verify that you have the right departure and right runway loaded and you don't turn the wrong way. So, for example, like going at a DFW, one seven right and one eight left, they're close, you know, they'll launch them at the same time. And if you're on the wrong runway, the wrong runway's in the box, you're gonna turn right. And you don't wanna turn right. If the other guy's turning left, you'll turn into each other. So it's just an extra step of safety to say RNAV T-Rex or RNAV grits, nine left, clear for takeoff. That's how they're supposed to do it, technically. What if you set up a camera position outside for improved? Mr. Martini, the engine startup sounds outside are pretty good. I will say that. They're good outside. But we all like the inside sounds. All right, uh, we have one company message here. Let's do that before we finish up. Uh, AOC receive. This is our final, and we'll accept it. 128.8. That's what we put in the box. And fuel and tanks. Most important thing. 15.8. Right there we go. And we're down 0.2 after engine start. So close enough. All right, uh, that goes on the perf page. And let's put you guys in the tiller cam so we can see what's going on. Sorry, my arm is in the way there. Looks like my camera might be at a bad angle. Oh well, uh, here we go. After start, that goes to that. That comes up. There we go. I don't know what, we'll out of sync. Let's go flap two from here. Let's take a listen. Chris Duper made it in time for engine starts. Shout out Chris Duper for the uh, thumbnail pick. Thanks dude, You're, that thumbnail is just 10 for 10, man. I wish it was sunny. This livery looks so much better in the sun. Not sunny over here. All right, that's good. We're gonna turn the APU off. Boom, boom. What's gonna pull up? We're four south. Are you guys ready? We're ready. Here we go. Uh, we also need to call tower, right? Which is 19.1. Let's do a brake check. Pressure zero. And uh, what did I say? Tower eight, 19.1. I need a radio panel like XP.
I don't know where I'm going, so I just hit the brakes. 19.1, and uh, Unicom will be... Where are we at? Hold on. This is why you can't. This way you need an FO. 122.8 for Unicom. Set. All right, here we go. I believe we are uh, four south. Is that what we said? I don't remember. Let's take a look. Fort Liquordale. Yes, sir, Shaq. Welcome up, man. Welcome to the stream, dude. Yeah, we are four south with Oscar. Uh, the land of ground. Good afternoon. Delta 357, four south, Oscar. Delta 357, land. Uh, Nine left at Mike 2. Taxi via Mike Mike 2. Nine left at Mike Mike 2 uh, for Delta 357. All right, so we've got to take off shift. If we had a good FO, he would have run the numbers from Mike 2. Uh, we can actually change that in the box. We'll do it here once we get on mic. Uh, we'll upload a takeoff shift. But we're essentially going to taxi straight out here and turn right on mic and go all the way to mic 2. Wow, that's loud from the outside. Sorry, guys. Outside sounds are just ripping loud, but inside sounds are a little bit quiet. All right, mic is... The second one, right? Yeah, it is the second one. All right, so we're going to go out on mic. Plan failures for today, Chris Stuper. So this is how we're doing it. We did one random failure trigger at the gate. It was a PFD. Uh, we had maintenance come on board, and they, they fixed it. And now we're going to do another random failure when we reach top of climb. And we also have a pre-armed failure for a cabin pressurization fault. And we're going to have to take manual control, which is something I've never done in real life in the Airbus. It's something I had to do in real life in the Embraer, and I just kind of want to see it for myself in the sim here. Number one, it's just kind of a refresher for myself, and uh, I want to see how it's modeled here in the Phoenix. So we're going to tackle both of those today. Yeah, there's a mean cloud building up there just uh, west of the airport. We'll get on mic. We're going to mic two. We're going to do a takeoff shift here. So what we can do for our perf data, I mean, I know we're going to be more than good, but to be legal, if you something happened and uh, view intersection data, there's a way to do it. I hate, I hate doing it like this. Um, bum, 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 bum. Where is intersection? Mike, can I, like, enter? I can't enter anything. Hmm. Delta 21, thanks for choosing Atlanta at Charlie. Cross from my east right to join Echo to the ramp. We'll see ya. I don't know what that does. Hi, uh, Charlie. Cross uh, let's, east let's right. Echo to the ramp. I mean, Hopefully. we don't have to put the shift in. It's only a couple hundred feet. I mean, we're good. We're running Toga. We're going to be off before the end of the thousand footers anyway. So in real life, you'd have to make sure they were sent. Um, in real life, what happens too is this is Mike 6. So we got a ways to go. We always run, at least the good first officer will always run the intersection that is most limiting for the takeoff. That way we have the, if we get anything other than that, we're already secured. For example, like in this case, we have Mike 2. If that was even an option, the first officer would have run uh, Mike 2 in the perf data, and then we would have had Mike 2 numbers. And if we get full length, it doesn't matter. If we get Mike 2, we're good to go. Another very common spot for that is a place like Dallas Fort Worth, 17 center, 18 left, doesn't matter. They have three to four intersections that are all in the same block. They're only a, you know 100 feet or so different from each other, but theoretically, remember, it's always CYA, cover your rear end. So if you take off from the intersection, you didn't have the shift in there, even though it's only 100 feet, the FAA could come back and say, well, why didn't you have the proper takeoff numbers for, uh, for that? And it's good principle. So what you do is you always run the most conservative value, even if you're not expecting to get it. That way you, you are covered on all bases. Remember, we work smarter, not harder. So that's kind of why we don't send prelim data unless you need it for performance 
you know, questionable performance stuff. I don't even think I have, this is Tango. Okay, yeah, we're still good. Um, you know, I don't run prelim data because I'm not gonna use the prelim. I want the final data. So why run it, why run it, why run it twice unless, you know, those few scenarios where I'm looking to actually see well, what kind of performance do I have on this departure? I got terrain, all quadrants. Then I'm gonna be looking, you know. Or if you're loading up for a transcon, Delta 357, Arnav to grit, from a nine left at Mike 2, clear for takeoff. Arnav grits, nine left, Mike 2, clear for takeoff, Delta 357. All right, we gotta stop talking here. Let's go ahead and do our flight controls. Down, neutral, full left, full right, a neutral, rudder, so we can do pedal disconnect. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't work, basically. I still haven't figured that out. We know the rudders work, full left, full right, auto brakes, max. Takeoff config checked. Doing five things at once. Taxi light on first, double click, that comes on, that comes on, that comes on. Flight attendants prepare for takeoff. Weather PWS can come on, that's TARA. We are ready to go. 500 watching, 200 likes? Yeah, let's hit that like button. I'll give you guys something to like here in just a second. We're gonna go full blown toga. Let me get her all centered up here. We're cleared for takeoff. Takeoff is all green. Before takeoff checklist, gross weight piercing of pleach trim is 0.2% CG set. V1, VR, V2, flex 125, 124, or correction, 125, 130, 134, no flex set. Flaps config two. Flight instruments set. Flight controls check. Takeoff runway, nine left, mic two. Fuel required, 15.4, 15.5 on board. Engine mode selector, normal bleeds of packs are set. For takeoff checklist is complete. Should be 0.2 down. There we go, we're set. Here we go. Give me yogas in chat. We're gonna spool them up. Fifty nose forward on the stick. Come on, give me, give me how many likes you got? Can we get, uh, can we get two hundred and fifty likes before I, before we go full toga? Come on, turn it blue. Here we go. Enjoy the sounds. Toga. Oh yeah. Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust is blue. Let's get back on center line. Thrust set. Neutralize that pressure by 100 knots. 100 knots, check. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. Man, that looks good. Flyby that we don't have. Oh, we hit 300 likes on the departure. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. Appreciate y'all. All right, there is thrust climb. Let's go ahead. Remember, lower that nose. Get a positive trend on airspeed. You see how my airspeed is actually decreasing there. So I'm not gonna, not gonna bring it back just yet. There we go. There's our positive trend in airspeed. Thrust climb, climb auto thrust. There's F speed, go straight to flaps one. In the left turn. No, 357, people like to say if it's fun, we're not gone, but I say if, it, if we're busting, we ain't busting. Contact Atlanta Center on 32.9, I don't want to reply. Over to Center, thanks for that. Thanks for ATC, we'll talk to you next time, Delta 357. All right, we're gonna contact another controller. There's F speed, we'll go flap zero. Atlanta Center's online, 3295. Let's put it where we want it. Let's dial that in. If it's buses, we ain't fussing. Is that what you said? I like it. I like it. 3297. Center, good afternoon. Delta 357, 4.5, climb at 10,000 on the smelts too. 3357, Atlanta Center, under contact. Climb to maintain, level 370. Club maintain for level 370, Delta 357. A little bit of turbulence as we come out of the clouds. 37 is blue. We got to climb and maintain. We'll pull for open. Look Mark at that break out. A little bit of chop coming out of the top of the clouds there. Light chop. Light chop, my friends. There we go. Let's go back on the flight directors. If we bussin', I ain't fussin'. <laughs> okay. I like it. I like it, my friend. 
Parker 4236, straight of contact, 50 miles west of the Choo Choo, choo you are. Good evening. Man, those sounds. I mean, the climb sounds are spot on. Yeah. I guess I need to come back over here a little bit further. Uh, as we, as we turn into the wind, we turn straight into the 24 knot headwind there. Saw a little bit of increase in performance. That's as expected as normal. This airplane flies so nice, guys. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I mean, this airplane really flies nice. We're about ready to go through 10,000. So cheap mode here if you want to enjoy views you don't want to turn the autopilot on as you go through 10 just go ahead and park your uh your square just park it on the 10 degree line there and uh, that's going to give you a rough good pitch for uh climbing out here if you don't want to turn the autopilot on we're at a 10,000 feet so we'll turn that off we'll turn that off we'll go ahead and hit a forward call there let the flight attendants know we went through 10,000 got a 357 you can delete the speed over heisman all right we'll delete the speed over heisman delta 357 all right so we don't have any speed anymore so Easy way to clear that out, we'll go to Heisman. We'll go ahead and delete the speed constraint, insert that, and now we should go straight into our cost index climb speed, which is 339, you see that? Now it's gonna wanna lower the nose, so we'll go ahead and lower the nose about seven and a half degrees or so. It's a good pitch attitude. Your hand flying it. Remember, don't over control the airplane. She hand flies beautifully, just little pressures. Put it where you want, let it stabilize. That flight director, she, I mean, she wants to climb out a little bit shallower, so we'll go ahead and lower it down a little bit. I figure we do a little bit more hand flying on this departure than just sitting at the wing view since we're just looking at clouds. 554 radar service terminated, free to approved, yeah. Nice, easy control pressures. Free to change for the yeah. Shaq, imagine this bird in VR. Yeah. Yeah, man, I, I, I don't even mess with VR, but I have a feeling I would be sucked in completely if we were in VR with this bird. So in this climb out, about two and a half degrees nose up, you're gonna you're only gonna be climbing 800 feet or so a minute here, which we are, but as the speed increases, it's kind of like driving a boat. You get on pad, you get on step. So we're gonna speed up here. You know, 340 is really loud at 14,000 feet. So I'm just gonna dial in 310 here. We're just gonna dial in 310 on the climb out until we get a little bit higher. Down at 14,000 feet, the air is pretty dense still. Whoa. Uh, okay, I don't know what that's all about. I don't know if that's a weather reload. What is going on here? Let's go back into this cam. I don't know if that's messing with the sim. Okay, I'm not touching anything. This is an interesting bug. Maybe I gave it too many compliments. I like, I'm not, if you, <laughs> look, if you don't believe me, look, I'm not even touching the stick. Okay, now it seemed to, uh... Cactus 1331, runway 36 right, clear for takeoff. Interesting. What if I put it on autopilot? This is kind of scary. Let's see what happens. Get a 551, turn left, heading 1. Bank angle check. No e-cams, no failure. I don't think it was really a failure, because everything was... It was just, I think it was a glitch. We're okay. I don't think that was a failure. I mean, it was, I think that was definitely a bug. <laughs> weather load in it is probably a weather load. We are stable though. All right, we're good. We'll go back to live cam. All right, 17.3, close enough STDs for you and me. One, two, and three. One for the jump seater back there. We're set. Let's go ahead and turn the sim down a tad. Spilled my bourbon. Weather reload XP? I know, that's exactly what I'm thinking, man. <laughs> Sorry, Gene, I didn't Certified mean to spill your bourbon there, sir. Sorcerer Dave, thank you for the five pound super chat. Says, I've had this happen to me before on the climb out, no idea what. Well, I don't either, man. But thank you so much for the five pound dono. We got her settled out, it seems. I think we're going to be just fine. Knock on wood. We made it. Would you turn back if that happened in real life, Adam? If what happened, if the airplane was doing physically impossible maneuvers, yeah. Yeah, because uh, that, I mean, the airplane, it was some type of glitch with the PFD, like it just jumping like that. Uh, but it wasn't just the PFD, it was all, it was all, the, it was the actual attitude indicator was jumping. It was getting some conflicting info. So the airplane physically could not react that fast in real life. You would 
destroy the wings. So, uh, some type of weather reload bug. It went all MD-11 on it. Yeah, exactly, Jeff. Weather reload happened to me yesterday and even took the aircraft off autopilot. Ouch. But look at that view, though, man. Look at that. And that's how it is. There's a lot of weather moving in now to Atlanta. So we're climbing down to the home of XP-72, South Florida. We're going to get to the Sunshine State. It's going to be beautiful. Captain Meow, what's up, sir? He says, why did, you, why did the perf takeoff calculator select flaps 2 or 1 plus F? Wouldn't 1 plus F give you best climb performance, higher V speeds? Wouldn't be a big issue on a 12,000-foot runway. Captain Meow, I have no idea what Phoenix uses to calculate their flap speeds uh, or their flap configurations. I really have no idea if they're just using a stock table and it's just putting in the raw data. In real life, it is a very complex equation. Uh, again, where US, most US carriers and even foreign carriers pay for the same service uh, from aero data. And they run all of the variables and they give you all the options and we just uplink it. I have, without without knowing what Phoenix is actually coded, I cannot well, answer that question. I just plug it in the box and off we go, off. man. I mean, realistically, the flaps two is totally fine. I mean, the only the only thing that you could think about is the more flaps you have out, the worse your second segment climb performance numbers are going to be. When there's zero terrain, it's really, I mean, nothing to worry about because you're it's zero terrain. When you get to higher terrain, then you really kind of start thinking about that stuff. But, I mean... Without, like I said, without knowing what Phoenix uses, I couldn't answer that question. Santiago, you got that yesterday over the Colombian mountains? You know, I did hear there's some crazy mountain wave turbulence or something going on. Is the top of the white arrow at the top of the ND tuned to a VOR? Yes, it is. And it is tuned towards Mike Charlie November. All right, so just as a recap for everyone tuning in, we do have a pressurization fault scheduled in the climb out here. So I'm going to stay in the cockpit. I don't know when it will happen, but it should happen before we reach top of climb. And Walker, we're going to go through to that in, with real procedures. Again, I, this is a, it's a fault that I saw in the optionable or clickable failures in the McDo, and I really wanted to test it myself for my own knowledge. I've, I've, I've talked about it. I've studied it. I've looked at the procedures before. Never happened to me in real life on the Airbus, but it's happened to me in real life on different airframes. So I kind of want to see it play out here. <laughs> Mr. Shaq, thank you for the 10 month support, man, dude. What are you doing supporting the channel? You need to be saving for flight training, sir. <laughs> but thank you, man. I really appreciate your support. It says experience bartender. I need one. <laughs> Five-star experience bartender, I need one. Shaq, I'm going to send you back a bartender right now, my friend. Directly to seat 1A, first-class window seat. It's coming. Thank you for your continued support, man, and I hope uh, keep us posted on your en endeavors with flight training. Wojtek, thank you for the $5 super chat, man. I appreciate you. According, according to my play, I wonder if Fly Live is causing issues. Is Fly Live causing issues? You know what we're going to do? We might just turn Fly Live off. But thank you again for your $5. I don't know, Wojtek. I'm glad you're learning, man. I'm glad you're learning. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm here to teach. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. How often do you guys use the footwell lights? Footwell lights? You mean uh, this one down here? Uh, whenever I need to find my wallet that slipped off the uh, pedestal and I'm getting ready to leave the airplane. That's when I turn it on most of the time. Vs Lang, welcome back to Private Pilot, sir. Glad to have you on board as a new member. Welcome to the channel, sir. I can go actually go ahead and turn down some of these lights. We don't need them on. Let's, as nice as they look, let's go ahead and turn them off. Maybe we don't need to be burning bulbs out here, so we'll turn these off. We'll leave the FCU lights on. All right, we're climbing up. Everything fine and dandy. We're sitting here fat, dumb, and happy, as we like to call it. Yeah, we are going to uh, we're going to Fort Lauderdale, Biller. Sorry, I changed that because I think the scenery looks better in Fort Lauderdale. Yep, another stream planned tomorrow, uh, Mahish. Oh, here we go. All right, I have control. Clear the caution. Ecam actions.
Cabin pressure system one plus two fault. Uh, mode selector manual. Okay, so we've lost pressurization of the of manual pressurization. So man selector, we're gonna push this into manual mode. Man vertical speed as required. Okay. Clear cabin, clear cabin. Status, read status. Man cabin pressure control, vertical speed climb 500 feet per minute, descend at 300 feet per minute. Aircraft uh, target altitude, 39 is eight, 35 is seven. So I guess we're targeting 7,500 feet for 37,000. Uh, during final approach, man vertical speed full up. Okay, so we'll clear status. We're looking, we're gonna target 30, 7,500. So we clear this. We're still pressurizing. At 7,500 feet, we're going to go ahead and stop it. And we're climbing at 500 feet per minute. So we're gonna leave it right now, but we're gonna have to manually adjust with the vertical speed of the cabin. That's what this little switch is for. I wanna see what happens here. So we're at 7,400 feet. Okay, so while, since this happened in the climb out, we're pretty much status quo right now. Theoretically, I could just go a vertical speed zero and stop the climb, but I want to go ahead and, uh, well, there's 7,500. So let's go ahead and go cabin pressure down because we want to, oh, okay, we don't want that. Now it's shooting down. Uh oh, okay, up. Oh boy, this is not good. Up. It shouldn't work that fast. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, center Delta 357, we need to stop the climb here. Treble shoot a pressurization problem. Delta 357, Roger, maintain, uh, maintain probable 320. Maintain 320 for a Delta 357. All right, so vertical speed zero. I'm going to set 320, vertical speed 200 feet. We're going to level at 32,000. We need to get this under control. So one click of the switch should be about 50 feet. Um, we're at 7 PSI. I can't pop out the screen. I don't know why. Is it right alt? Oh, I can. Okay. Uh, but you guys can't see it, unfortunately. All right, so I need to go ahead and do down. What's it, 7,000? I need to zero it. So I did two clicks. And now it's descending a tad. Wow, this is going to be annoying. I might have to just clear this. All right, so we're... Remember, the pressure said between... Uh, already up the bottom. What was our schedule? 8,000 for 39 and 7,000 for 35. So anywhere between 7 and 8 is our, where we want to set it. 1436, All right, I think we can go ahead and continue the climb now. Yeah, I got, I got the, uh, I got the cabin, I, or I'm sorry, I got the ND popped out. You guys can't see it, unfortunately, because it, it won't capture it as it has to capture a new source for OBS. But right now, I think it's pretty stable. Let's go ahead and continue our climb. I'm going to set 370 here, and we're going to climb up at a vertical speed, much more controlled. I'm going to get a hold of ATC here real quick. Yeah, center for Delta 357. We can go ahead and resume climb to 370 now whenever you're ready. Delta Common maintain, file level 370, Delta 357. All right, I'm going to manually vertical speed climb the aircraft now because I want to have a little bit more control on how fast we're climbing. So we're going to stay at uh, 7 6 Mach. I'm going to do 1,000 foot per minute here in the climb. And we're going to monitor this here on the ECAM. We can go down to 7,500. That's fine. That would actually be ideal, would be 7,500. Remember, our Delta PSI limit is uh, 8.6. I'm going to go ahead and now read the COM, which is a separate procedure. We've already completed the ECAM. We've got the cabin pressurization under control. So let's go ahead and read the expanded procedures here. All right, due to the slow closure of the outflow valve in manual pressurization mode, and depending on the type of failure, the following procedure may not avoid the depressurization. Mode selector switch manual. 
So we've confirmed the mode selector is in manual. Monitor cabin vertical speed and cabin altitude frequently and adjust as necessary. Maintain aircraft altitude at or above cabin altitude. The two safety valve limits for delta P, or change of pressure, delta P right here, is 8.6 PSI. So we got to make sure we stay below 8.6 PSI or else that's when the valve's open for that. Okay. The status, we already read the status. The target vertical speed is 500 feet per minute. The target vertical speed for descending is 300 feet per minute. Okay. Uh, we already said, during final approach, here's a good note. So during final approach, the man vertical speed control needs to go in full up. So what that means is when we go full up on this switch here, we are opening the outflow valve. We need to depressurize the aircraft completely for landing. Uh, check that the change in pressure or delta P is zero before opening the doors. That's the end of procedure. There is no there is no divert necessary here. There's no emergency necessary. We literally just have to do manual control of our cabin vertical speed, which is annoying and uh, can, uh, can take away from your capacity to maintain situational awareness, right? So we got to keep that in mind. We have a new threat on this flight, uh, but hopefully we're going to keep it stable here. As soon as we level at 370, we'll be able to really monitor that even better. You can see our Delta P is still climbing. Uh, the cabin is climbing about 100 feet per minute here, a little bit shallower than ideal but that's just fine uh, matter of fact i want to descend the cabin a little bit ah eh, we'll be fine we'll, we'll let it go up we'll see what happens Atlantis center radio to, check advise on initial let me go ahead and just do a real quick real quick click of that and we're going to descend the cabin a little bit Get her back down and then it should stabilize. <laughs> not a lawyer by descent at 300 feet a minute. That means the cabin descent rate, not the aircraft descent rate. You want to descend the cabin at 300 feet per minute, ideally. I'm going to be annoyed if you get a nosebleed. Al, you might, you, I don't know if you get a nosebleed, but your ears will be popping. Your ears will be popping. So the only thing that's interesting is. Got a 357 rider service terminated, so you can stay the crew. All right, over to Unicom. Thanks for your tea, Delta Route 7. Ciao. So the only thing that's uh, Walk 1436, the interesting is like it seems to react much quicker than I anticipated. I think that might be a simism, but all right, 122.8 for Unicom, 35 climbing to 370. We're holding about 7200 cabin altitude. I need to just do a real, just a, I can't do it short enough. It like it almost wants to hold it. I need to just do little little clicks. There we go. I think that worked better. All right, 7,500 on the cabin altitude is perfect. With 500 foot per minute in the climb is perfect. 8.6 psi is our limitation on delta p. So we're looking good now. We got a thousand feet to level off. When we level off, that's gonna we're gonna have to manually do an adjustment here. Uh, that's him. I think they let you divert. Yeah, I don't. We don't need to divert though. This is not a diversionary type of failure here this is totally manageable we're going to put a bandage speed here when we level at 370 we're going to see what happens i might just clear this failure because we've already pretty much accomplished it and it's it's kind of hard to do with limited camera angles going up and down but at least we got to see that it is modeled man man vertical speed works here as we level at 370, again, we're looking for 7,500 feet, 8.6 max on the Delta P. There's Alt Star. I think we did pretty good. I'm going to pop it out. You would not want a sinus infection on this. That is very true, Steve. You would not want that. Let me do just a quick little... Yeah, I can't do it quick enough to, like, stop it. That's pretty close. All right, so you could see 7.9, 7,700 feet. 
All right, I think we can say that we've successfully simulated that nicely. I don't want to have to do that the whole flight, so I'm going to come in here. We'll go McDo menu. We'll go. Uh, we'll go back to the maintenance, and we'll just clear that one. That was one that I had manually armed. Uh, we'll go ahead and recover pack one and pack. Or I'm sorry, CPC one and CPC two, and we go ahead and put the mode select back into auto, and we can verify that now in auto mode. It's going to descend slightly for the ideal pressure, about 7,500 feet per minute. We'll look at the pressurization. We are in landing elevation auto and zero. So simulated fault has been successfully completed. Yeah, chaos. It'd be annoying to monitor that whole time. But we're level 370. Looks like it's going to be semi-smooth. Let's go ahead and turn the seatbelt sign off. This will guarantee us some turbulence here. Let me turn the sim down a little bit. And... Uh, Matter of fact, let's go outside for a minute and see how it looks. Oh, man. Super nice. Super loud. What do we listen to on Delta? I think some jazz. And then we'll do a, uh, we'll have to do a, another random fault here. I said atop a climb, we're going to do another random fault. So let me hang out with you guys and chat for a minute. We'll get a song or two going here. I think jazz is fitting for Delta Jets. Would you tell the pastors about it so they know where their ears pop? John, exactly. I'll do a little announcement right here. Now, ah, folks on the flight deck, just live it off our cruising out to 37,000 feet. We do appreciate uh, you, you flying with us this afternoon on our way down to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I just wanted to make a little announcement that we are aware of the, uh, you might have experienced some ear popping there during the climb out. A little bit of a pressurization schedule change. Nothing's wrong with the airplane. Everything's under control, but uh, you're not alone in that. I think most of us, we felt that in our ears, but the situation is under control and uh, we should be landing in Fort Lauderdale in just about another hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Welcome aboard. Elevator music it is. Turn the cabin lights off. I guess we should. We haven't. We can do that. There used to be a bug where you turn the cabin lights off. You couldn't see your taxi light. Did they fix that? Free drinks for everyone on board. Exactly, Carlos. Exactly. Are they going to be what? Sim settings? Cabin lights. Turn them off. Oof. Look at that. I feel like I'm on a Delta Jets right now going to Lauderdale. Are we going to Miami? I was going to do Miami, man. But here's the thing. The Fort Lauderdale scenery looks better, in my opinion, than Miami. Need to simulate an elevator failure to match the elevator music. <laughs> in real life, yes, they can be changed. Exactly, Nick. They can. So what we'll do here at... How about this? At the equal time point, at the ETP which we're going to get into depth on this equal time point here on the ND. We're going to get in depth on the next stream because we're going to be going across the water down to Cancun as we get ready to do our official pre-launch of the South America tour. We're going to talk about ETP uh, extensively tomorrow. So when we hit the ETP, we will manually trigger another random fault. If you want to see another manual or if you want to see another random fault manually triggered at the ETP, hit the like button for me. We got 460 watching, 300 likes. Let me know if that's what you want to see. I can't guarantee what the fault will be. If we have to divert, we have to divert. I will just do a straight up random fault and I will trigger it manually. And then uh, we'll just, we'll go from there. If it's something super lame, we'll do another one. I can guarantee you that. If it's a super lame one, we'll, uh, we'll do another fault. And just like that, over 400 likes. You guys are awesome. I guess we're going to be triggering a random fault at the ETP. Right, but at what point is unnecessary concern... At what point is unnecessary concern or possible panic? What do you mean, Zach? 
Oh, you mean, I see your other question. Uh, yeah, you know, a pressurization issue you do feel, you would announce, I, I would I would definitely have made an announcement because you would uh, guarantee you would feel it. In fact, not too long ago for all my members in chat, you probably remember I posted a video. I had a, pressuriz a cabin pressurization problem in the Airbus. It wasn't that, but it was, uh, there's a computer in the back that like knows the exact position of the outflow valve. And it was out of, like either out of sync or it was mistiming what the outflow valve was doing. So the pressurization was holding perfectly in the cabin. However, the outflow valve was fluctuating and it was consistently fluctuating. It would go like up to a thousand feet per minute climb. Then it would go to zero and descend at 500 feet. And it was between negative 500 and a thousand consistently. And there was really nothing I could do. I tried switching the CPCS. I tried switching the auto systems. I was talking to maintenance on the ground. They said, take a video of it. We want to see it. So I videoed the videoed the movement on the ECAM for the uh, for maintenance control. And then I posted that video on for members only on the uh, community tab. So and that very flight, I actually did make an announcement about halfway across because that's how I noticed it. We didn't have any ECAM go off. We didn't have any abnormal stuff go on it was just i felt something in my ear and i'm like what is going on so i went and i pulled up the pressurization page and sure enough i could see it going on so then i made a pa i said you know you may be feeling a little bit in your ears going back and forth it's uh we have it under control there's just it's just kind of a an annoyance right now or something like that basically it's just a there's nothing to worry about it's just a inconvenience that we have to deal with and uh, to compensate for that, I'm going as fast as the airplane will let me fly so we can get on the ground sooner and not have to have that annoyance. But yeah, you just, you know, I always find as a captain, it's the more you keep your passengers in the loop, even if you tell them a lie, they need to be in the loop. Because if you don't say anything, that's the worst thing you can do as a captain, in my opinion. If you don't say anything, the, the anxiety and your own mental picture that you build up, especially if you're a nervous flyer to begin with, oftentimes is much, much worse than reality. So I tend to, uh, I tend to say more, make more announcements uh, because I feel like that keeps the cabin. It keeps everybody on the same page, you know? And, and what I mean by lie is, you know, if you have something really serious going on, you're not gonna tell them that. You're gonna tell them something a little bit more jaded of the truth, right? Because it's all about keeping everybody calm. But creative, uh, Creative white light, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you don't want passengers using their imaginations. <laughs> Sean, the, the, out of the loop by real by uh, by reality standards, but in the loop as far as being part of the uh, the aircraft and being included, <laughs> not feeling left out. Because if you don't say anything then it's going to be much worse. You know, if they say, uh, you know, if I got on the, I, I actually saw a video on YouTube. It's, there was a pilot that came on, I think it was a foreign carrier in, in Asia somewhere where the captain was panicking essentially. And he said, I don't, we don't know what to do. Please pray for us that we live or something like that was his announcement. You say that you're going to have pandemonium break out in the back. You have to maintain situational and operational control of your aircraft, including everybody on the airplane. So, you don't want to say, uh, yeah, we lost, uh, we lost all of our hydraulics, and if we don't do the right st uh, steps here, we're probably all going to die and, and be a smoking hole in the ground. Even though that very well may be the reality. Be like, okay, so we have a problem with our hydraulics. We've set up for an emergency. Uh, we're running through our emergency procedures. We ask that you uh, listen to the uh, cabin crew and, and follow their instructions closely. You know, that's much better than saying, okay, we got two hydraulic systems out, and we're losing our third, and if we lose that third, we're pretty much... SOL. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to say that. Exactly, Stephen. By the way, does anybody on board know how to fly an airplane? We're going to die. Pray now. Is that what it was? Yeah, it was. I remember listening to it. I was pretty shocked. I want to see an engine fire so we can see what the announcement is. Yeah. I don't want to be making one of those. <laughs> John, everything is fine. Nothing is nothing is on fire and I am not bailing out. <laughs> Just don't order the fish, exactly. All right, how are we? We're getting close. We're only about 40 miles, 40 miles to our ETP. 
This airplane is so loud on the outside. I don't know. I can't. I don't think I can do the. I don't think I can do this music anymore. I. I don't think I can do it anymore. <laughs> Maybe this one. Why when I disengage my autopilot, the alert disengage sound continues? Andres, probably the discon you're disconnecting it incorrectly. The proper way to disconnect the Airbus autopilot is not by pressing the autopilot up here on the FCU. It's not by forcibly taking over control of the aircraft, which these are all ways that you can disengage it. The only way to correctly disengage the autopilot is by use of the autopilot uh, disengage, or I guess tech, by definition, it's a uh, takeover push button. The stream with the flaps jammed landing was absolutely amazing. Would love to see a green plus yellow dual hydraulics fault. Would be pretty interesting to see you landed in direct law. <laughs> Captain Meow, thank you so much, man, for the $13 dono. I appreciate that, sir. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, flaps, uh, the jam flaps landing. That one was, I, I dug myself a hole on that one indeed, um, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for the dono, man. Bank angle check right back at you, sir. But yeah, the only way to disengage the autopilot is with this button here. If you press this, it should just, you'll get a little master caution and then it'll go away uh, rapidly. But you do get the sound because the airplane wants to tell you that you disengage the autopilot. That is normal and correct behavior. You should play uh, your official legendary Airbus anthem. Fights by AGST. <laughs> I'll get your adrenaline pumping. Oh, no. Uh. We, we got to do something where the rat pops out. Jeff. I hope not. I don't know. We'll see. We're almost at the ETP. At the ETP, it could be... It could be something as serious as a dual engine flame out or a tank valve fault, you know? We'll all see. Let's do country. Oh, that one. I don't think I have that one primed up, but let me take a look. <laughs> I don't think I have that one primed up. That one's actually hard coded in my OBS. I did like the country music back there, but I mean, does, uh, I guess the, the Delder Jets, they're not really, uh, what about, what's this one here? <laughs> Captain Dennis, what's going on, sir? Thank you for the $5 super chat. It says, uh, just got my first job at uh, Southern Airways as a second in command of the caravan. Nice. I think I'm going to be based in Hawaii. I'm very excited. Captain Dennis, that's awesome, man. Have fun flying in Hawaii. It should be really beautiful out there. Congrats on that, sir. Thank you for the $5 super chat. I'm glad your career has progressed. Funny story, I applied for, uh, what was it? Pacific Wings, I believe, was the operator. Back in the day, caravans out of Hawaii, and I didn't get the job. I was pissed. <laughs> but awesome, man. Congrats. I had friends that did caravan stuff in Hawaii. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, man. Can you do PDC in the Phoenix? Yes, I believe so, but you have to be online with the proper PDC control, and I think they only do that in Europe so far. If you set up the wrong key bind, the alarm just keeps blaring. Oh, yeah. Make sure you have the right key bind for it. I believe it's I believe it's autopilot disengage, not the toggle. You don't want to toggle it on and off. You want to make sure it's just the disengage button. All right, 10 miles. <clears throat> 10 miles till doomsday. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. I'm going to bring it up on this menu. We're going to go into the config. We are in random failures mode. I have failure type all. Failure rate is at realistic. We will trigger random at the ETP. In real life, do you usually let the decel point run all your speeds or do you take it out of managed speed? Matt Warren. Depends on how lazy I'm feeling that day. Uh, realistically, below 10,000 feet in the U.S., unless I'm on a, a really long arrival that's got multiple speed restrictions already programmed, I'll leave it in managed speed. 
But most of the time, I'd say about 98% of the time going through 10,000 feet, I will use selected speed. I will actually pull for selected at 250. And then I will activate and confirm the approach phase. Because when you start flying uh, into all these different airports that have all these different procedures, sometimes the bus, especially with our FMS-1, gets funky. And you don't want her to start slowing up on you waiting for you to extend flaps when you have different speed restrictions from ATC or you've got something else different published for a company op. So 99% of the time it's out of 10,000 selected speed, activate and confirm the approach phase and you're good to go. All right, here we go. We are at the ETP. Dun, dun, dun. Please don't be something crazy. Insert it. I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to sit here. Oh, that scared me. Jeez. I was like, I never heard that thing before. JFK Tower Supervisor. All right, cool. That wasn't for us. Everything seems fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. What's on our overhead? Everything is fine. Sorry, that was loud. Everything is fine, I think, so far. Let's go through a status check. <laughs> the coffee maker broke and nothing else. I hope so. This is normal. This hydraulic uh, here below the green in cruise, that's because the green system is holding the gear up, so that's normal. Everything looks normal there, 38, 50. Huh, okay, weird. In that case, do we get another? We'll see, let's see if we can, let's see if we can see what it was. Let me look at, if I go through manual, I can see if anything has triggered. Oh, something has triggered in fuel. Center fuel pump out. Oh, well, nobody cares about that. All right, let's do another. One more. We'll do one more. Austin D, thank you for the super chat. Two dollars, man. I didn't see that just till now. I said, have you ever thought about flying the 7-4? Austin D, if I had an opportunity to fly the 7-4, I would absolutely love to. But the operators that fly 7-4s right now are really not anything that I want to get involved with. So I think that ship has sailed, my friend. Okay, here we go. One more. This is it. Roll the dice. If we get a flame out, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> Just keep pressing buttons until something exciting happens. With the AP off keybind, can you still turn it on from the side stick? No, Sean, you can't. So you press it, it doesn't matter if you press it twice, three times, you can't turn it on. Which is correct. Smitty! Welcome to Commercial Pilot, sir. Glad to have you back on board the channel. I think you know the, uh, I think you know the, d the rule, the, uh, the perks around here, but exclamation point, welcome. If you need a refresher, thanks again for uh, becoming a commercial member. Glad to have you on board, sir. Bathroom light bulb is out. Okay, well, I haven't seen anything abnormal yet here. Everything still looks good. Let me do a quick, uh, let's do a quick cycle of the systems pages. Still nothing, okay. Let's see what we have here. Let's see what we actually triggered. Oh, does it only do one at a time? Oh, why is it only doing fuel pump failures? Okay, so we got two center pumps out. Interesting. What if I keep doing it? Are we just going to have no fuel pumps? Let's see what happens here. What the hell? We'll do it again. Oh, shit. Here we go. What do we got? Oh, I have control. 
Clear the caution. Flight control, ELAC 2 fault. Okay, so we got an ELAC fault. ELAC 2 off then on. All right, this is, uh, I've actually seen this in real life. Okay, so ELAC 2, push button, confirm, off. Give it a few seconds. And back on. Please reset. Hey, we got a resettable ELAC 2 fault. There we go. Just like that. We reset our flight controls. So in real life, if that had happened, I would also go through the book and I could see, let's pull up that ELAC 2 fault. It was resettable, so it shouldn't be anything serious. Uh, let's see, ELAC 2 fault. In some sites, uh, in some sites, ELAC 2 fault is triggered without the procedure and fault light and associated push button does not come on, it does not apply. If ELAC 1 computer is thus does not apply. If unsuccessful on the reset, functions are performed by the other ELAC, which that doesn't apply because it was a successful reset. Uh, fuel consumption would be increased and the prediction on the FMS would be unreliable if the ELAC did not reset. Uh, you'd have some in-op systems, you'd be CAT3 single, you'd have increased fuel consumption, and you'd have an FMS prediction of the fuel unreliable because of the increased consumption. Uh, ELAC 2, CAT3 dual. All right. Roll the dice again. All right. Let me see. I will, I will, I, since we're getting close, let's, ah, man, I would say we're already there. Okay, we'll run, do one more. One more. We'll do one more. Okay, I heard a click there. I have control. This happened to me in real life. Okay, electric AC bus to fault. All right, first things first, I'm starting the APU. All right, electric AC bus to fault. Gen 2 fault. Gen 2 off then on, if unsuccessful, off. Okay, Gen 2 off. Confirm Gen 2, confirm. Off. I got fault lights up here. What is going on? I got all kinds of faults going on. Okay, that's off. And then back on. Does not appear to come back on. If unsuccessful, Gen 2 off. Okay, Gen 2 off. Avionics vent and fuel. Clear AC bus 2 fault. Clear electric AC bus status. Oh. Oh, it won't stay. You got to hold it. Look at the in-op systems. Uh, okay, we got a problem here. So let's do the, uh, let's do this, look it up. I forget what it was called now. What was the fault? Recall. AC bus 2 fault. That's a good one. That is a good one. Oh boy. Here we go. <laughs> this uh, electric AC bus 2 fault. AC bus 2 is no longer supplied. Extract. Push button needs to go into override. Extract push button. Override. The avionics ventilation system is in the closed circuit configuration. Air conditioning is added to the ventilation air. ATC transponder, select system one. So we need to go to system one, which we are. If the FO was flying, he would have been on system two. We're on system one now. Check. Associated procedures, landing gear, LGCIU two fault. Engine two, EPR mode fault. That would be for IAE engines. We don't have that. Uh, refer to e promote fault procedure that does not apply in the CFM 56. Secondary failures. Avionics vent. Fuel. Status. Uh, engine 2 approach idle only. FLS if installed is final app plus raw data only. Oh, <laughs> Dude, the, the list of failures on this. Oh, my gosh. In-op systems. ADR2. I, could, I can't read them all. I'll run out of... Uh, uh, but left and right tank pump two should also be out. So we look up top. Left and right tank pump two in op. 
We've got something going on here. We're going to get to that. Uh, rudder trim 2, FAC 2, ATC 2, transponder 2, CAT 2, center tank pump 2, uh, which is already faulted. Brake system 2, BSCU channel 2, ILS 2, GPS 2, ACT pump if installed. Uh, F FWC2, right windshield heat, FOP do. Oh my God, this, this would be, we would, all right, let's continue reading the procedure here. Other in op systems, right cabin fan, brake fans, one, two, three, and four if installed, ADF2, DME2, weather 2, MCDU2, engine 2, ignition B, VOR2. Look at this. You know how deep I am in the, in the comm right now? And look, we just said, I'm picking a random one, VOR2 in op. What is all my ND? VOR2 in op. I'm talking about this airplane that's got some serious simulation going on here. Uh, FO and P FO, PFD and ND, ND are out. Can I not switch them? Now you'd probably wait for, uh, no, the NDs are unpowered. Like there's no way to uh, get that back. Wow. And I could put, so what I could do is I could put the uh, status page over here. So this is what I'm gonna do. I put the status page, just what the switching panel is for. So I'm going to switch the ECAM since my lower ECAM is out, right? I'm going to put the lower ECAM on the captain's ND screen. So now I can see my systems again. And you can see right here, AC bus 2 is not powered. It's failed. I started the APU generator just because we have a Gen 2 that's not, uh, not working. The APU is available. It's on. It's already picked up. Uh, it's already standing by to pick up a load. But there's nothing to pick up because the bus, the bus went kaputz, okay? It's not, it's not the uh, generator problem. It's a bus is, is out. Okay, let's continue reading with this. This is a long procedure. Uh, we did that. Uh, uh, associated procedures. So we need to do LG, LGCIU2 fault. And then, you know what's crazy? There is no land ASAP. There is no divert. I mean, this would be a, uh, what, what am I trying to say? something where you would really need to be looking at a possible diversion depending on where you're going but right now i mean everything is still fine uh i'm going through avionics vent we go ahead and clear that fuel we know our our tank pumps are out so that's normal that we can go ahead and clear fuel now we have status when you see this green arrow down here in this in real life in the airplane it's it is uh it's not awesome okay in op systems. This is everything I just ran to you. Basically everything off bus two. Look at that. Everything two. FO. I mean, if the FO was flying, the captain's definitely flying the airplane now. Uh, you can see all of these failures here, and we can actually. Scroll down, I believe, right? There you go, by hitting the clear key. And when you hit the clear key, now we're at the bottom of the page. Brake system two, SDAC two. Flight Warning Computer 2, DMC 2, Transponder 2, GPS 2, and Recording System. Okay, so clear that. Enter destination data. I'm going to go ahead and put this back to norm. What do we do? We aviate, navigate, communicate. I'm single pilot here, so let me go ahead and fly the airplane first. And in real life, you would both be tackling the problem. But since I can only do one thing at a time, let's indeed fly the airplane. Let's get our weather Let's get set airplane set up, and then we'll come back. The airplane is fine. We got a secondary generator online ready to go if we need it. Um, as far as computers and everything else is fine. So we just have some problems. We do have a, a landing gear problem we need to sort. So to help remind myself, I'm going to put this down, reminding me that I need to do the uh, LGCIU2 procedure. But until then, let's go ahead and fly the airplane first. So weather request, we're going to Fort Lickerdale. That is set. We'll go ahead and send that off, and we should get a message back soon. I'm going to go back to the perf page, next phase, next phase. I'm actually going to slow this down. Uh, imagine if we still had that pressurization fault. I would have to fly with this up on the pressurization page. You talk about some serious multitasking. That would not be a lot of fun. Mike is cutting in and out. Uh-oh. Tech check. What about now? Audio seems fine. No, it, it's working fine. I can see it. Hmm. Guys, re refresh your stream if you're having an issue. But audio seems fine. I can watch. I'm seeing the output right now. So.
Everything looks fine. We're going to continue on here. Uh, we don't want to expedite, but I'm not going to come down. We're going to go 7-9. Jeez. And uh, three ten on the descent. We'll set that up. Next phase approach is uh, let's pull up our thing here. We'll go arrival. Mike, one fault. ETA to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it's going to be picking up here pretty quick. Let me go apply METAR. Fort Lauderdale, 140 at 16, gust 2, 3, 10 miles, 30, and 30.09. So 30.09, and temperature was 30, and 140 at 16. That's hot. 140 at 16. I want to land on 10 left. Uh, as far as the barrel ref, we're going to come back to that, so we're going to put the barrel, find that here. Is stream audio failure on the Phoenix? And I don't think so. I don't think so. I hope not. It might have just been something weird with uh, with OBS, but I can see I can see my microphone output, so it, it is picking it up just fine. All right, Fort Lauderdale approach. Let's look at the ten nine page. What are we looking at here for runways? Ten left is the longer one, right? Nine thousand feet. We'll have to see what our other failure has, but we want to be on the approach for 10 left ILS. We'll star that chart. Is a random failure option in the real 320? No, <laughs> no, it is not. Bottom altitude is 207, so let's set 207 in the barrel. That is set. We're going to get our LS push buttons on. We actually need to start down here pretty soon. We'll scroll that. We'll scroll that to 240 initially. And let's go ahead and just begin to start down. 240 is set. Mock descent seatbelt sign is coming on. And we're starting down. All right, so perf data is set. LS push button on. We're going to use manual brakes. We don't even have, we're on BSCU2. So, okay, that's good. Final approach fix is at 1800 over Nove. All right, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Since VOR2 doesn't work, I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off. Everything else looks good in the box. I allow 110.10 is what we're looking for. Final approach course, 096, 207 is set. Autopilot 1 is still on. APU is available. We're looking good. Okay, airplane is set up. We're coming down. Let's go ahead and continue with our associated procedures here. Landing gear LG, LG CIU 2 fault. Okay, we got to look that up. If LG CIU 1 has failed, no. Uh, all right, if LG CIU 1 has failed, JIPWIS system off. That does not apply. Engine two approach idle all idle only when idle is selected on the ground with slats extended only approach idle is available. That means we're going to have a higher idle on the ground when we taxi in. We won't have uh, ground idle. In op systems LG CIU two reverser two and only jip whiz if it's LG CIU one, which it is not. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much. Oh, here we go. Here's a note. The partial spoiler extension, if installed at landing when only one main gear is compressed, is no longer available. The spoilers extend normally on ground when wheel speed greater than 72 knots. Depending on the LG CIU failure, only a part of the listed systems may be lost. So that only really applies, you know, if you have that system installed. What that is referring to is there's Airbuses now, most of the modern ones, they have partial spoiler deployment. If you land in a very strong crosswind and you're, in, let's say you hit the right main first, what's going to happen is you're going to get partial deployment of the left wing spoilers to help bring that left main down and keep, and keep you uh, directional control, help you out with directional control. So that is a really nifty feature of the Airbus. Uh, you definitely can see it in strong crosswinds when you're landing. If you're looking out the passenger window, you might see those spoilers come up half and then they go to full. So what this failure is, is saying is that that feature, if installed, is no longer available. So if we have a really strong crosswind, just be, it might be a little bit more firm or a little bit different on the directional control on touchdown. But 
All right. How do you remember all the in-up systems after you've cleared it? Well, there's an easy way to put it back. You don't remember them all, and, it, and it's a very common thing. So what I'll do here is I'm going to bring my switching panel for the eCam. I want to put it on my ND. So I've got my eCam on ND here, and I want to pull up the failures, right? So I press the recall push button right here. This is RCL, stands for recall, and that will bring up the last failure I had. So you can see here, now it's gonna walk us all the way through the procedure again. It says electric AC bus two fault, we did that. And we also have a gen two fault. You could see AC bus two is done, okay, clear. Uh, avionics vent extract, we put it in the uh, override position. You could see avionics vent here. All right, clear avionics. Fuel, and they're associated, right? So look here, fuel, fuel. I'm looking at the fuel status page. We got one tank and each pump is now in op. That's not really a, uh, a big deal, but it is obviously uh, a con not a concern, but it is something that we have and it is model. Like the fact that this is modeled and modeled correctly with the AC bus two fault is saying a lot. Okay, I mean, this is, this is the real deal stuff here. All right, we can clear fuel. And now I can go back and I can see all of my status page, right? So when you have a failure like this, you're going to have a systems briefing first, which is what we just went through, where it will automatically populate the correct systems page for you to look at to see what happened. And then when you clear through all of those, it'll bring you to a status, which will then give you a refresher. And we can see here, then let me just refresh my memory, ADR2, RA2, FO, PEDO, AOA, TAT, windshield heat on the right, CAT2, the tank pumps are out. Reverser 2. So that's kind of something to think about. We shouldn't get Reverser 2 on landing. Vent extract. Main galley power is out. Uh, Gen 2. So I'd probably be getting a call right now from flight attendant saying, hey, we got uh, no power in the main galley. And I'd be like, yeah, uh, we were just going to call you. We've had a uh, one of our electrical, we have an electrical fault happening right now. But we're fine. We're going to be on the ground here in Lauderdale in about 25 minutes. But you are going to have no power to the main galley. I'll give you a call here in a little bit, give you more of a detailed briefing, but uh, thanks for the heads up. All right, cool. Generator 2 is off. Yaw damper 2, rudder trim 2, rudder travel limit 2 is also off. And then green arrow means there's more. Hit clear. You go to page 2. This is interesting. Brake system 2, SDEC 2. The only thing that I was like really a concern here is brake system 2. That means we're down to one brake system. We still have normal brakes. We still have normal brakes, so we're fine. But if normal braking were to fail or our other braking system, then we're going into alternate brakes. So that's, that piques my interest. SDAC, flight warning computer, DMC2, transponder, don't really worry about that. GPS2, recording systems, cool. So we can clear that out. We've been refreshed. Cabin is descending. We set up for the approach. And uh, we're going to take her on down into Lauderdale. All right. Would this warrant a pan pan? You guys love the pan pan. Um, it's not really, I mean, this would be one where you probably would say pan pan. I mean, I think pan pan is a super, I think maybe it's much more common in ICAO phraseology. And I mean, it is, it is in the FAA too, but very rarely do I hear pan pan on the radio. It's more of like uh, a, you know, either declare the emergency or you don't. And you can request priority handling, which is pan pan. So this would be one of those situations where, yes, it is absolutely acceptable to say pan pan pan. I'm thinking now, you know, systematically here. I'm thinking I would talk to ATC and it'd be like, hey man, we had uh, everything's fine right now, but we do have an electrical. Uh, we did have some electrical reversions. Uh, we'd like to just get priority into Lauderdale if you can work that out. Um, and typically, that's all you need to see. ATC would be all right. Delta 357, Roger. Uh, descend and maintain 1 to 12,000. Proceed direct to He's. All right. Descend to 1 to 12,000. Direct to He's for Delta 357. So He's is the fix. Direct to. We're down to 1 to 12,000. And he'd probably get a call back from the controller now because now you peaked him. He's like, well, what's going on? He's like, uh, Delta 357, can you. Uh, can you say again what the problem was? Like, yeah, we had an AC bus, uh, we had an AC bus failure, uh, but uh, everything else is fine. Uh, we just we don't want to go around if we don't have to, you know. Just give them a heads up, like, hey, we're fine. There's this is not an emergency. We're not diverting, but we don't want to be sitting around up here, you know. So a Cessna 172 can do a touch and go in front of us. Like, let us get in and get down on the ground is kind of what you're saying. So uh, that would be. 
that would kind of be how that would be handled in real life. And this is these are great questions that you ask that because I'm sitting here thinking like, OK, well, what if this is me right now, real life? What would I do? And you bring up a very valid question. And I think I would have done just that. I would say I would talk to control, be like, look, we, you know, we request some priority going into Lauderdale here. Uh, it's not, you know, because it, it's not an emergency. There's no land ASAP. There's nothing to really be concerned about. The engines are fine. You're flying. So it, these are great. This is great. I'm glad we're doing the stream because I'm, I'm sitting here with you going through this in my head. Like, shoot, I don't, what would I do? So I love this. I appreciate you guys asking the questions and bringing up the, uh, bringing up, bringing up this human factors. Tom Pasco, 26 months. Ah, there you go. Uh, Tom, I totally, I totally forgot to mention that I've been super excited. Yes, we have new emoji or new membership badges. So you'll notice that the uh, 12 month, I cleaned up the stripes for the uh, silver uh, first officer stripes there. I cleaned them up a little bit. I think they look better. And I have selected, you guys sent me several options for the 24 month subscription badge. I am now declaring it. You have reached V1 status on the channel which is the highest status you can achieve you get to seat sit in row one a window seat or aisle seat of your choice the middle seat will always be open free drinks for the duration of the flight and uh, i just can't thank you guys enough for your support tom pasco the member in chat is the one who designed this badge so uh tom thank you uh shout out to you man for uh designing the chat or designing the badge i appreciate you man that is our v1 status badge indeed so uh <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom's in chat. If you want, give him a, give him a little thing. Give him a positive rate. Give him, give Tom a positive rate for contributing. And there was a couple other really good ones that I saw y'all sent me, but this is the one I decided on. So thanks, guys. Appreciate your support. <laughs> Hold short golf golf. Yes, we did get the maintenance log back. And this, we did the LG CIU2 failure procedure. So I'm going to go ahead and store this. I don't need it anymore. And let's go ahead and get our altimeter. What did we say it was? 3009. 3009. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set 3009. And let's do a quick approach. Set 3009. I mean, I'm obviously the pilot flying because uh, Phantom doesn't have any screens to look at. And it's not like I can switch over to them. It's just they are no longer powered. So you are SOL, buddy. All right, approach checklist. Briefing is complete. We're going to land 10 left. We're going to turn right. Um, Right there under the Delta terminal, plenty of landing distance. I don't, auto brakes should still work and they are still armable, but I'm going to do manual brakes, full reverse on this landing just because we are down to one uh, normal braking system. I'm, what I would do in this situation, I'm going to talk you through it, is I don't want to use auto brakes right now because when I touch down, I, I, I'm going to put a little bit of brake pressure on the pedals. I want to make sure. I've got brakes there. I want to make sure the other system is working just as it should, which it should be. But it's just another confidence thing for me, right? As soon as we touch down the weight on wheels, I'm just going to put a little pressure on the brakes, make sure, hello, yeah, brakes are there. We are going to be able to stop. We have normal braking. No worries. Because the last thing you want to do is, you know, put your feet on the brakes and then it just goes to the floor and there's no braking action. You're right into an alternate braking situation. So uh, that's why I'm going to leave the auto brakes off because they would disengage anyway if I did that. So I will use manual brakes, full reverse. We should only get reverse on the operating engine, so we can expect to have asymmetrical reverse thrust. Uh, we can counter that with the rudder pedals. It'll be just fine. I'll either do full reverse or idle reverse. Uh, flaps full. Any questions? No questions? Let's do a landing data assessment here, but let's go ahead and continue descent. I want to go ahead and uh, come back to 250, and then we're going to set up 7,000 at holes. So 250. I'm going to pull. I'm going to go spoil break out. I'm going to go vertical speed 1,000, and I'm going to set 7,000 feet. So the reason I set it up this way is I'm going to attempt a slow down and go down uh, procedure here. And, and it's very hard to do in the air, but slow down and go down. But the best way is to force it into a vertical speed mode. I use the speed brakes. And you can see here that we're forced it to hold 1,000 feet per minute. I can kind of slow down at the same time with that set this way, so that is fine. Matter of fact, I might even shallow this out about 700 feet per minute, and I should have some more speed bleed off, which it's bleeding off. 
Now I feel confident we're going to be fine. 250 below 10. I'll just pull for open. Thrust idle. Open descent. 7 is blue. We're headed to He's intersection. All right. Let's go ahead and do our landing thing here because we never did do that. So let's go ahead and do this like that. We're going to do uh, well, runway condition is dry. And Fort Lauderdale is dry. Runway is uh, 10 left for landing. And apply. Oh, let's do a refresh of the METAR. We'll apply METAR. 3007. Uh, landing weight. Is there a way to find our landing weight in here with this? Other than in the real airplane, it'd be in your uh, McDo over here. And I could see arrival info. Uh, next flight number, if you require, no, it's not there. Huh. All right. All right, next phase, approach. All right, so we're going to be 8.8, .8, 1,000 pounds. I got to go here. We're at 138. Let's say we're 137. Eh, we're probably over that, but we'll do 137. 137. Uh, 7.5. Let's just do that. We'll hit enter. 37.5. Uh, let's see, medium, max, manual. No, we'll just say low brakes. Idle to no reverse, manual landing, flap full, auto thrust, doesn't affect us on. So we're looking at 6,900 feet for landing with our additive, 7,000. So we don't have a ton of room to play with, but we should be just fine. Remember, all landing distance assessments that are calculated in real life are based on no reverser anyway. So having one reverser in op is really not going to affect us too bad. All right, 7,250 speed brake still out. Oh, well, that's my bad. That was proper of the airplane there. We'll go wing light on. We'll get the lights on. And here we go. Let's get the sims up. Sim sounds up. Bring you back into the realism mode here. You think we can hit 500 likes by the end of the stream? That'd be awesome. We just hit 500 viewers, so do appreciate y'all stopping in, hitting the like button. You guys are awesome. This has been, uh, this actually went by much faster than I thought with that failure. That was a pretty extensive ECAM we went through. Do I plan on making a video on CPDLC? I will in the future. Oh yeah, good point. Let me get flight recorder ready to go. Five hundred likes. You guys are awesome. Boom. Butter this. Uh, Fort Lauderdale is one where you don't really uh, you don't really sit around for butters all that much. It's only nine thousand feet. It's not short, but you're like eh. three twenty. Not so much. Heavy three twenty one. The way the runway slope it. Well, that's ten right. That's eight thousand feet. So, all right. Let's go ahead and descend and maintain five thousand. I'm going to push for manage on that one. So we're going to follow the constraint. Look at that. Out constraint. Perfect. Perfect simulation there. So we're holding 7,000 in the constraint. Current altimeter is 3007. Let me update that. 3007 both sides. And 3007 down here in the uh, ISIS. All right. And now it is in descent mode. I wish I could choose to keep this bright even with the outside bright. But I, I see what they're doing. Fubar, thank you, man. I appreciate it. The music choice should have been AC, DC. Ah, I see what you did there. How do you know the proper time to start deploying flaps? These, uh, so the number one thing that I say here on the channel for being configured, 2,000 feet above touchdown zone, flaps to 180. So do whatever you need to do to be 2,000 feet above your touchdown zone at 180 knots in flap config 2. Once you reach that point and you intercept the glide slope, it's very easy. Push for manage speed so you start slowing to your V app. Lower the landing gear. As you see the VFE next icon, which is a little dash here on your speed tape, once you're about 10 knots below it, 
select the next, next notch of flaps. Wait for the next one, next notch of flaps. And you will be stable every time by a thousand feet. I shouldn't say every time, right? Remember? We never say every time all the time. So 99.99% of the time it'll work out for you. All right, so recap, we should get a, well, I don't even know if we'll get a status message because our ND is out, but what's interesting is number two is on battery. I guess we leave it on that. Still got our pee paws. Huh. All right. Hold it. We need to start slowing down. All right now, I'm just going to dial in 180. Let's pull out our, ah, wrong one. I keep thinking that's the JEP symbol. <laughs> Does one reverser work and create a yawing effect? A little bit, Griffin, a little bit. In the real airplane, it's, it's not as bad as you may think. It definitely does, but it's uh, by no means is it excessive or uncontrollable. Now, what, it, what will it do in the sim? That I don't know. There's VFE next minus 10. We'll go ahead and extend flaps one. We'll go ahead and go tiller cam on. And the center maintain 3000 or vertical speed 400. That's fine. Let's keep coming down. That's the vertical speed reversion chirp there. That's because of what I did. That's totally fine. We got 3,000 set for the next altitude. We're approaching, there's our VFE flight. There we go. That's VFE, that's your max flap extended speed. We're gonna do minus 10 knots, so there's minus 10. We'll extend flaps two. Beautiful. All right, I can see Fort Lauderdale there. We're starting to pick up a little bit of, a little bit of light chat. Fort Lauderdale ground is on on 121.4. That's interesting. We'll go ahead and prime him up. Thank you, you like the LEDs? All right, flaps are two. We are pretty much looking good. There's our slope. Let's go ahead and arm it. Uh, Delta 357, runway 10 right. You are clear to land. Whoops. 10 right, clear to land. Delta 357. So approach, AP2. So we're Glide Slope Star Loc, Cat 1, Autopilot 1 plus 2. And we are captured up. If we have to go around, we'll leave 3,000 feet as set. There's Glide Slope officially captured now. Oh, 10 left. Yeah, 10 left, excuse me. Or 10 left. I landed on 10 right the other night <laughs> in real life. Maybe that's why I said 10 right. But. Man, let's just enjoy these views for a minute, huh? Is that real life or what? Man, this stream is almost over already. I feel like we just got started. Maybe we should do a, a short flight to Orlando with a no flap, no slat fault. Uh, this is the, I don't know why this airplane is just, it's so crazy to me. I just flew this airplane for three days in real life and all I wanna do is come home and fly it again. 
Like, it takes a lot of an add-on to make me want to do that. I'm like, wait, the stream is almost over. I'm having a good time here. Over to Fort Myers? Ooh, yeah. What are you using as yoke, thrust, and flaps? Looks like the real deal. Mock, this is the FS Project Side Stick, my friend. FS Project Side Stick. So we're looking fine right now. In real life, if you guys want to know, like, you know, shadowing controls, it's kind of unnerving. I'm sitting here, nothing, no hands on the controls. Typically, depending on your SOP, about 2,500 feet when the radar altimeter comes alive, that's pretty much the standard at 2,500. That's when you shadow the controls, even if the autopilot is on. You know, and I always, t I'll pretty much most of the time in real life, my hand's pretty much always right here, no matter what, coming in on approach, you know, out of 5,000 feet, especially if, even if I'm not flying, you know, I'm using the mic, which is over here on the trigger. So it's always good to just shadow the controls. You never want to just sit and, you know, sit down with your arms folded and have the airplane flying because if something goes on, I mean, you got to be ready to counteract it, right? So. Sergey, I don't know. We'll see. I might, I might be a second leg. We might do a second short leg. To Orlando, right? Because they do Lauderdale, Orlando. Who does that? The spiritual Wangs. We could take a spiritual Wangs flight from Lauderdale to Orlando with no flap, no slat. I just want to try that because your approach speed is going to be like 180 knots. I do it in the sim in real life. I'd be really curious to try it here. We might have to do that. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Here we go, approaching 2,000 feet above touchdown zone, which coincidentally on this approach is almost the same MSL as it is. But here we go. Oh, let's go ahead and start the recording. Recording is on. Gear down, speed brake arm, did not arm, now it did, VFE next minus 10 flaps 3, and we're VFE next already, minus 10, let's go straight into flaps full. Alright, we are set. That approach speed is way low there. I might, in real life, I might bump it up a few knots, but we're not floating this one. We're gonna take her all the way down. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the autopilot off with my side stick right here. Double tap. All right. Autopilot is off. We're cat one. Runway's in sight. Do have some gusty winds. 15 gusting like 2.5 or something. We'll see how the airplane handles that. Winds, <sighs> winds in the sim are very hard to, to recreate. Even in the level D sims, you know, they put you in high wind scenarios and it's like, eh. You can only do so much to computer generate mother One nature. Time. Never quite like the real thing, but right now this is pretty believable. A little bit of a crab here, not much. I have been having a hard time with glide slopes in the sim. I don't know if they're, I'm pretty sure they're bugged out. Some of them drive you into the dirt. I always want to fish these little ponds right here by the airport. Every time I fly in, I think, man, I bet there's some nice fish down here. No one fishes them. All right, it's definitely Florida. It's so bright, I want to put my sunglasses on. I'm going to need a sunglass mod. Oh, no. This is the Latin VFR scenery, so the glide slope looks good. There's our PLI drop down. That's good. We'll see how the Latin VFR guys did here with this. 100 above. Alright, so see that glide slope just ran away from me there? It didn't even do anything. Interesting. Alright, I can see two whites, two reds, barely, landing. Drive it on down. We're two whites, two reds. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Retard. 10. 5. Ooh, a little nice little gust of wind right there. Alright, spoilers. Remember, we only have one reverse. I want to see how it yaws me out. It did pull me out a little bit there, but not bad. I tap the brakes. Everything is fine. I'm going to let it roll. It's hot. Let that one reverser work hard. Let it work hard. 
There we go. See a little bit of yaw. That's actually pretty realistic, that yaw motion there when I came out of reverse. 70 knots. We're going to get on the brakes, and we'll take this next turn here. Very nice. It, it actually felt pretty good. That yaw, it, it jumps you a little bit left when you pull it out, and then a little bit right when you stow it. So that was nicely simulated there. Very nicely done. All right, we're going to go straight across, turn right. Oh, actually, we got to call ground. Let's go ahead and just stop the airplane here. And clear the runway first. Remember, always clear the runway. You're not clear of the runway until you cross those hold short lines. All right, we'll go here. We'll set the brake. We'll go into uh, ground, and we'll give them a call. Lauderdale ground, good evening. Delta 357 off 10 uh, left. Uh, ready to park, or taxi to park. <laughs> uh, Delta 357, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Taxi to parking via Bravo Tango to Tango. Have a good day. Uh, Bravo, uh, Bravo Tango, Bravo 2 Tango to the gate for Delta 357. Oh, Bravo Tango, Bravo Tango 2 to the gate, Delta 357. Tango 2 is right there. There we go. All right, here we go. Brakes off. We'll go ahead and stow that. I'm going to pull the flaps in. We're going to leave the lights on. Remember, we're going to leave the lights on because we're doing a replay. I think my reverser is still triggered. What's up with that? Well, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. There we go. I guess I got out of sync there with that. Here we go. We stopped the recording. We're going to leave all lights on, but the flaps are coming in. Beautiful. Look at this Latin VFR scenery, though. Look at that terminal. I can't tell you how good that looks. So Delta Jets is we're just going to park it right here. Actually, you know what? Let's take it over here at Delta 4. Oh, wait, I see wing walkers over here. Can I go over here? I'm going to go over here where I see wing walkers. I, I'm just, I've never, uh, I've never seen that. They walked out. I don't think they care, or it's probably just a Microsoft thing, but I do see wing walkers. I know we're not on the center line. Oh, they're walking back. That's typical. As soon as you get there, they walk back. Yeah, we need three. We only have two marshalers. Let's go ahead and uh, since there's a tug in that one, we'll go ahead and park on the other side. We'll park on, uh, what's that, Delta 8. Come around. All right, that looks good. S safety zone is clear. Delta 8, we're coming in. How are we looking on lineup? Oh yeah, we're looking good. We are looking good. Since we don't really have a marshaler, we'll just stop it manually right about there. Oop. Oh, we're short. We came up short. Damn it, Delta. It's, it's the, it was the extra weight from the uh, from the hats. All right, let's reconfigure. We're going to go flaps full. We're going to arm the speed brakes. We're going to let the flaps deploy, and then we're going to jump right into the replay. I'm going to put you guys into uh, replay cam, so that will clear that out. Oh, we don't need to play sail just yet. All right, and we are set. So here we go. Let's go ahead and disconnect from that sim. Let's see how we did. While we watch this lovely replay here, I'm going to put a poll in chat. We got 500 watching. I need 100 votes. Yes or no? If we can get 100 votes, by the end of the replay, we'll do it. And if we go to, it'll be a short flight to Orlando, we can do, I want to do, a, if we do it, we'll do a no flap, no slat. 
Oh, listen to that. I'm going to turn the sounds up. This is cool. I feel like, I mean, this is like, look at the look at the spoilers working. Okay, well, did anybody vote? Oh, Jesus, 121 votes. <laughs> okay, I guess we're doing a second leg. I love it. Does the CEO, CEO CFM 56 require more thrust for taxing than the NEO? Uh, no, I think the NEO is pretty much the best on the ground when it comes to taxing because of the huge N1 fans. They just they just push that airplane. Okay, well, we're, uh, we, it looks like we're doing it. <laughs> no flap, no slant. Okay, so we're not going to do, what I'll do is, because it's such a short flight, I won't walk you through the full extended procedure. I'm just going to do with what the, uh, what the EFB has here in the Phoenix, and then I might go through a couple things with you how we get our VREF. I'll talk about some real world scenario thinking that things you got to think of as a, in the real world about the crew, how we handle it. Uh, Cause it is a maneuver or it is a procedure that you test. I shouldn't say test, but it is something that you do. You get tested on for your check ride on your type ride. You have to do it. So we'll go through all of that. Oh my gosh. Look at these views. I wish the spoilers would stay down where they're supposed to like, they're kind of, they're doing a lot of work when they shouldn't be. But look at this. Look at this view, guys. There's those ponds I want to fish. Oh, my word. Look at the water on the ponds because it's 15 to 20 mile an hour winds. This is real life. This is better than real life. <laughs> on the Kool-Aid, Fubar, exactly. Berto, what's up, man? Thank you. Yes, sir, second leg. All right, Berto, we're doing it, man. Coming in over the highway. I don't remember the name of that highway. I'm sure XP does. This landing felt pretty good. A little bit of kick over with the rudder, straighten it out. Just, just hold it off a tad. Oh, yeah. Spoiler on one, no spoiler on the second one because it's not supposed to deploy and it is correctly simulated. Damn, that is awesome. A couple of spiritual wings over there. Looks like that's the airplane we're gonna take. All right, let's go ahead and pause. Let's watch it again. We watch it all the way. We'll watch from about there. We'll let those come in, hit resume. Let's watch it from outside. Whoa. Whoa on the ears. All right, let's see how we did here on touchdown. I-95, thank you, Juan. Thank you. Coming in nicely. Should have had a little bit of rudder deflection. Oh, there it is. There we go. A little bit of rudder. Right main, left main. Damn, what was the landing rate on that? Did you guys get a landing rate? I never saw one. Oh, I think I was in the wrong view, right? You never saw it? Because it doesn't pop up on my screen, but that looked pretty good. I think that was a certified bona fide butter, if I don't say so myself. Well, that was a pretty good butter. I did report light chop. Uh, there's light chop on the ground, actually, on the taxi, and we encountered some light chop. I need a telescopic fishing pole. I actually almost bought one the other day. I mean, that was... There you go. Just hold it off. There's a the little bit of rudder. Get that right, left. That's pretty much textbook. How do we do on center line? Oh, that was, oh, look at that. You could see, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to rewind it. I'm going to let the reverser come in. I'm going to turn the sounds down. Look at this. This is a little bit, I don't know if it's maybe a little bit excessive, but it's definitely at least modeled. Watch when this reverser pops, watch the yaw of the aircraft. It pulls it to the left. Watch this very subtle, very subtle yaw moment here. And it just kind of it just popped the nose of the airplane a little bit to the left, which is understandable. That's realistic. And reverser, boom, a little bit of yaw. That's crazy, right as it goes into reverse. 
as soon as you start that reverser, but yeah, get back on center line. Now, does it show it when we come out of reverse? Let's see. We're holding it. Oh, I think replay is kind of bugged with the, it's just keeping it in reverse. Oh, yeah. oh no, you know what? It was, it was out the whole way, wasn't it? All right, one more, one more, one more, and then we're going to set up for a second leg. Short leg, but it's going to be action-packed. Let's wind it back. I'm let you guys enjoy this one here. Resume. I'll put you inside. Bring the sounds up a little bit. I'm going to start prepping for a, uh, for a second leg. So stick around. It's going to be a short hop. We're going to take Spirit, Lauderdale, Orlando. Look at that. Look at the uh, guitar there. Mm. And we're going to have to do a zero flap and zero slap landing. So I will see you in about five minutes here as I set up for the next leg. Thank you all for your continued support. I will see you here in a minute.
Okay, I think we are ready to go, guys. I'm getting rid of Fly Live for this one because I don't know if that Fly Live was causing an issue with the airplane there when we were uh, cruising and cruising when we saw that just on departure. But we have loaded up into a Spiritual Wings A320 hitting, sitting over here at Gulf 5. I love this Fort Lauderdale because they've correctly modeled this here. This looks so good having this, uh, this huge... A wall here essentially I think the cars go under it underneath there so we're gonna depart off 10 left uh, but this is our beautiful bird this is a retro Skittles livery here for spirit uh, I know they use IEs in real life but we're gonna rock the CFMs today just because uh, that's all we've got available to us but just a fun fact when we were messing with the outflow valve earlier here you go this is what we this is the actual valve that we were mechanically controlling with that vertical speed knob so that is open on the ground everything is good hopefully we don't have any failures we're kind of sitting on a turnaround state here we need to import our sim brief so we get into the airplane uh everything looks good here just real quick up the left side ground control is on those are already being aligned this lights are already set auto arm this is an auto fire test has already been done by phantom 320 my fo uh everything looks good down here we're gonna go ahead and pull our sim brief flight plan though so let's go ahead and get our efb set up first and we'll do that. We only have, we're supposed to be off block in, at 55. So we got to start uh, boarding ASAP. We're a little bit late. We got to change terminals over there from the Delta Jets terminal. So we are ready to uh, expedite here. So Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, 26 minutes. Okay, that is us. Um, ground services and weight and balance. 103, we need to load the aircraft ASAP. 17 minutes, let's go. Start the boarding process, please. Uh, seven, eight, I'm gonna have to manually adjust that. So here we go, real world technique. I wanna put that down because I don't wanna leave with less than 10,000 pounds of fuel per our, uh, like just 10,000 pounds minimum dispatch fuel. So that's why that's down. Let's go ahead and do a quick initialization of the box. We'll go right in here to flight and knit. Uh, do we even have to put this? I don't. I wonder if that will automatically init. Let's go ahead and pull it. I think you leave it blank. Let's see. Hopefully no failures. Uh, we shouldn't have any failures up. Random failures are still on. But what we are going to do is we are going to do a no flap, no slat landing. Which is going to be interesting because I didn't even practice it. So I would have liked to at least seen what the airplane was going to do, like with the simisms. But... Uh, let's, we're gonna do it live. Here we go. Two six zero is our cruise altitude, right? I believe I found that flight plan. Yeah, two six zero. That is set. I want to depart ten right on the frisbee. So we'll go flight plan, departure, ten right. Frisbee one. Insert. Uh, it should have been to Wapum. Yep. Uh, hold on. Let me just make sure I did that right. Departure, arrow right. There we go. Waypoint. Insert that. There we go. Now it linked them to WAP them. And then we're just doing the rides to Orlando. Oh, geez. I don't know. What are we going to get? One seven. I know there's like some notums. Some runways are closed. I don't even know. Since we know we're going to do a flap slap failure, though, I'm going to land on the longest runway. So that would be three six right or one seven. Or 1-8 right. We'll do 1-8 right because that's long. We're going to need it. We're going to need it. I promise you that. I uh, want the rides to. Rides 2 is set here. And that was off of. I don't think. Does it connect? I don't believe so. Octal. No. Cool. All right. Rides 2. Insert. Clear the disco. Wap them. Direct rides. That is set. You're on approach to Miami now. Awesome, man. Brandon P. Welcome to Private Pilot, sir. Glad to have you on board, man. Welcome to the channel. Exclamation point. Welcome for your new perks here on the V1 channel. So secondary, secondary arrival. If we have to come back, 10 left. Uh, also, Miami is an option. Remember, Miami has uh, got some longer runways as well. So if we need, need something a little bit longer, we can go to Miami. That would be part of my takeoff brief. 30.07. Temperature off the ECAM, 2.9. Jeez, it's... A, Nice and warm. Nice and warm in Lauderdale today. I don't want to look this up, so 200 in the DH is set. That is good. Nothing to hard tune. Prog page. KFLL. Boom. 
perf and knit B set. We're going to manually change that. So it's probably hot in here, right? It's super hot in the cabin. It is uh, going to be if I don't do anything about it. So let's preemptively get the APU on. And uh, we're going to get everything else set up and ready to go here. Go ahead and start you. Take a listen. Bueller. Did I do it too quick? I might have done it too quick. Oh, here it comes. Hey, if there, we'll have to do an engine startup from the outside. Let's do that today. I want to see what it sounds like from the outside view. Or hear what it sounds like. Steven says, I'll get the burgers and hot dogs ready for when you stand on the brakes later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, everybody's going to need a hot dogs and uh, burgers because we're going to have a brake cookout on 1 8 right. We're going to have a cookout on the wheel well. I, like I said, I don't know how this airplane will handle it. Obviously, the brake temp simulation is a little bit off right now. They're already aware of that. Gosh, that sounds good. APU is on. We'll start the chrono. VOR, VOR, constraint mode on. I'm going to hit the magic button. 3006 is set one, two, and three times. No brake fans because we're spiritual wings. Uh, we have our fuel in tanks, but I want to make an amendment. So we're going to amend our fuel. I need to go 10,000. How can I do that? I know there's a way to do it here. Uh, but, 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 but ground services. No. How, how do you edit the... Uh, how do you edit it? Somebody tell it. Resend, load, passenger info list. I swear there was a way to do it. Is it too late because I already loaded it? Config in the McDo. Thanks. Let's do it on this one. Uh, config. Ah, here we go. I want 10,000. Most Airbuses will have a min dispatch fuel. 10,000 is set. And we got 10,000 on board. Perfectly. It is on board and balanced. So let's go up to the overhead. Fuel pump tanks can come on. They're all working. Seatbelt sign on. And we're looking good. So we've got a minute 24 in the APU. Re... Fort Lauderdale ground is 21.4. We'll call him after we push. So we'll set, oh, he's already in the box. We've got 22.8 online. We don't have any ATC for departure. So we'll set flight level 260 in here. 260 is set. I don't need this down anymore because I already looked at the, uh, the fuel. And we can just put 10.0 in the block here. And now we're waiting for a zero fuel weight. So that is good. All right. Uh, we do have a company message. Team Vodka, what's up, man? Good to see you on board, Team Vodka. How's that throttle treating you, man? I really want to see, uh, see your uh, review videos that you're making. We just did one leg with a random fault, and we got hammered pretty good with an AC bus fault, or failure, really. And we landed, but I didn't want to end streaming, so what we're doing now is we're firing up for a quick flight Lauderdale to Orlando, and we're going to do a no-flap no slat landing so it's going to be absolutely spicy i have not even attempted in in this in microsoft flight sim so it'll be uh it should be fun it should be fun all right everything else is good there though that's close enough 243 we'll go ahead and turn the bleed on we'll let the apu pick up the load i want to see something here so if i look at the electrical page 115 volts 400 hertz and if I turn you off, there we go, picked it up to load. Now we should see a load change here. Let me see. EGT's coming up. Look at that. EGT's on the rise because we just loaded the APU with electrical power. That is nice. That is nice. All right. McDo message. What's up, man? Fly J, going to see you, man. 
hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. We're setting up for an impromptu leg two. Super short flight, though. Only going to be about, oh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes in cruise. We're probably going to have to do a quick hold so we can get settled. Uh, received messages. Here's our prelim. This should have our old fuel, right? Yeah, this has our old fuel. 7.8. Eh, I don't want to accept it, but I will. Um, that was our old one. We should have an amendment. Need to send an amendment for a 10.0. So this is no good because we're going to have an extra 3,000 pounds in the, in the tanks. So we'll go back to the init B page. We'll set that there. We can kind of prepare our takeoff data. I think after loading, you can only do it in the McDo. Thank you, Garudin. I remember I did it one time in here. I think it was before I started the boarding process, so you're probably right. Optimum flap, force toga, absolutely. Anti-ISOF, packs on. Uh, we're not going to do the prelim. Actually, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing a prelim on this. Uh, what's the live weather say? Yada, yada. Intersection. Uh, 8,000 feet. No. Calculate prelim. Not going to put it in the box, though. Oh, yeah. Flap 1 toga, 13, 18, 23. We're going to be super light. We are going to be super light, which is good. Which is real good. Let me just see our landing because to save some time up in cruise. We do have landing distance procedures, slats and flaps. Flaps and slats at zero. This is the one we're going to use. So if you're just tuning in to the stream, this is the one we're going to use on landing in Orlando. We're going to see if we can do it. There is no there is no flare. There is no butter. It is just do not put the gear through the wheel through the uh, through the wings. That's the goal. But all right, so that is ready to be simulated. We'll go back to this page and keep a track keep track on our passengers as they're boarding up here. We got almost half the people on board already. Quick review of our departure. It's going to be straight out uh, on the uh, whatever our nav this is. Out of about 500 feet, left turn out. Restriction out of about 4,000 at Rotom. It's in the box. It's not going to be a problem. We got 260 set. Emergency return. If we have an emergency after V1, we're just going to go straight out over the water. Speed up, clean up, figure out what we need to do. We come back around. We can go to Miami if we need a longer runway. Okay, so that is set. I want that to stop, though. Don't, don't run. Stop. And we'll put him on constraint mode. And let's just uh, chill here in one of the most realistic views. I mean, that is awesome. But see, the inside, like, that's pretty quiet. Let's see. The fuel tank pumps over here. Yeah. Uh, then when you go outside, it's like... Hmm. All these ground crew just staring around, sitting around. What's a no-flap landing in a 320? Uh, it's going to be high. It's going to be about 180 knots. Uh, Johan, to activate them manually, just go ahead and go to the random failures in your McDo there, and then uh, just make sure they're on. But don't hit trigger. If you hit trigger, that will actually trigger the fall. So landing with flaps or slats at zero, I'm, like I said, I'm going to skip a lot of the procedure. Because basically you go through the same procedure that we did uh, the other day where you kind of extend, you try to get the flaps out, you try to see if you can get any flaps by extending extending the flap lever, depending on the nature of the failure, of course. Uh, if you and if you can't get any to, to come out, then you basically go into uh, landing with flaps or slats at zero, which I'm going to look up the reference procedure, which is under, I believe it's like a supplemental procedure. Hmm, 
some flight controls. Just about normal MD-11 speeds? Yeah, no, this would definitely be an emergency. Flight control slats and flaps fault and config is zero. <laughs> flaps lever recycle. If both flat channel fails, alt and blah, 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 blah. Max approach procedure for landing, use flap one. With the flap lever at position one, go around mode is available. That's an important thing to know. We're going to see. We're going to make sure we do that. Uh, VREF plus 60. Jeez. So whatever our VREF is plus 60, we'll go over this in flight. But I just wanted to have the procedure up. But it's going to be VREF plus 60. How are we looking on time? 10 minutes to push. Are we done loading? Uh, 103, we got 94 on board. Come on now. We'll go ahead and, uh, that's good. You go ahead and pull the, you can go ahead and pull the ground power, sir. So we'll go over to ground services. You can go ahead and pull the GPU. You can pull the chocks. Let me see real quick though. Make sure this didn't change. Airframe, that's good. Auto cast, LDEV. No, I don't want LDEV on. Nav and go around. We'll turn it on. Ice detection off. Yes. No FLS. RAs, units. I think that's what I'm supposed to do, right? If I do that. Oh no. I don't want that. Ground to date. Aircraft call, stay popping. Okay, pedal disconnect tiller, that's yes, on. Ground, good day, Caribbean 33. Run the road with you. Caribbean 33, welcome to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, stay parking. Almost done boarding. There he is. Dismiss. Good to close. Okay. Good to close. Yeah, that sounds good. Caribbean 33, taxi to parking via Charlie Tango. Have a good day. Charlie Tango, thank you so much. All right, Jetway's back. Let's go ahead and do our before start checklist. We'll get the beacon on. I don't know if I'm going to get my prelim. So what I'll do here is we'll just take the actual. We're 118.3 and 28.6. 118.3 and 28.6. 118.3 and 28.6. Boom. Perf. Come back here. Uh, what we, I'm, I remember now. Let's connect the tug. You can, can get get working. Uh, and let's do our perf takeoff. Sync final load sheet, please. Which it is. And calculate. LDEV is lateral deviation. Lateral deviation on the uh, PFD. Uh, 113, 18, 23. 13, 18, 23. Thirteen, eighteen, twenty-three. Flaps one toga. This is going to be a quick takeoff. Flaps one toga. What was our trim? It was like down or up point one. That'll be fine. All right, let's go back to here. Ground the cockpit. Hey, Captain Roll, uh, set up. Or actually, it'd be the other way around. It's like cockpit and ground. I'm like, yeah, we got you loud and clear. You guys, ready for brake release? Uh, that's affirmative, Cap. We're ready for brake release. All right, brakes release. Stand by. We're calling for the push. Ramp. Yeah, you can push. Cool. Here we go. If you wanted to go full spatial, just put minimum zero fuel weight. Yeah, we could. Now this will be, I wish we could, well, I pre-program pre the uh, turn here. We'll just go back at a 45. I love this terminal though. The, the, Latin VFR guys did a good job on this one. Uh, we'll go straight. We're not going to hit anything, are we? I mean, this is tight. This is a real tight terminal here. And that looks good. 
looks close enough. Push back complete. Set park and brake. Always got to wait. Even if they say that, you got to wait till they stop or else they'll never be able to get the tow bar out. Brakes are set. Uh, we need a little bit of yellow juice. There it is. Brake set. Clear to disconnect. Thanks for the push. We're starting engines. Copy that, Cap. We'll see you next time. All right. Engine mode selector ignition start. We're going to do this one from outside. Let's go ahead and start engine one. You see the rudder snap back? That's realistic. That's pretty cool. There goes the tug. All air traffic folks, you can see five. The low rail ground will be offline about 10 minutes. Why did we just get another tug? <laughs> did you see that? What is happening here? What? Why did we just get another tug? Okay, I hope he goes away too. We got a good start on one. Let's go ahead and turn two. Does the rudder move as hydraulics get power? Yes. All the flight control surfaces will go to their neutral position. Once you get enough uh, rotation there in the engine, that will actually get some pressurization in the hydraulics. You're absolutely right. It will. You'll see the control snap into their neutral position. Tug driver has definitely had a little bit too much bourbon there, Ricardo. You're absolutely right, man. I can't wait till we get IEs. I mean, this, yeah, it's just quiet. Just quiet. Airport authority is not found of pushback. All right. We have, we don't need all these lights on again. I wish I need to, I wish you could save. That's one thing. I wish you could save panel states like you can in the PMDG. Like I know we have preset states, which are good. We got cold and dark, cold and dark APU and all that. <clears throat> but I want to actually configure the cockpit like I want to and then save it. I wish we could do that. All right, so we have two good starts. So we'll go ahead and on the speed brake. We'll go flaps one. Love that. Love it, love it, love it. One plus F is out. Ooh, I like these wing textures. I like these wing textures. Very good. Uh, that can come off. That can come off. Company message. This is probably our final. So you, you can push off the gate. Now, again, that probably will depend on your uh, SOP. But you can push off the gate without your final as long as you, you don't take off without it. Where's the most fuel and tanks? 9955. Yep, that's us. We're looking good. Accept that. Ready to go. Perf speeds are set. Uh, EFB updated. 51 minutes extra gas. We're looking good. And we're up 0.1 on the trim, so let me just do a cheat mode here. Up 0.1, and there we go. What do we just push off of? I don't even know. Golf 8. Ten nine. Terminal 4 attacks to ten right. Here we go. Lauderdale ground, uh, Spear Wings 357, just off Gulf 8, taxi to uh, request and 10 right for departure. Spear Wings 357, uh, did you get clearance? Uh, negative, we did not. Uh, okay, would you like clearance? Yeah, yeah we would. We normally don't call ground control for clearance, but uh, yeah, we're ready to cop. Advise, your cruising altitude is going to be two three, gonna have to be 230 or less because of altitude restrictions to Orlando. Do you have a preference or can I just put you on flight level 230? No, 23 will work just fine for Spirit Wings 357. Okay, then uh, that makes my job easier. Spirit Wings 357, clear to the Orlando airport via the 51 departure wave pump transmission that is filed. Maintain 4,000 flight level uh, 
230 will serve as such departure. Departure for the C is going to be Unicom 122.8, squawk 664 wins. And what was the name of our SID? It was like the uh, Frisbee 1. All right. And uh, Spirit Wings 357 cleared to Orlando, Frisbee 1, Way Palm Transition, 4000, 230, and 10, departure 228, squawking 6641 for Spirit Wings 357. Spirit Wings 357, read back was perfect. Uh, ta uh, you already pushed the start, so you can go ahead and taxi. You said 10 left was your preference? Uh, we'd like to get 10 right, we're set up for that one. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what I. I thought it was turning you. Okay, so once you're right, we have Tango 8 Hotel 5, Juliet. All right, 10 right, Tango 8 Hotel 5, Juliet for Spear Wings 357. And we do have a Delta. All right, Tango 8, so we're all set to go. So Tango 8 Hotel 5, Juliet. <laughs> V1 ASMR, sorry, was I breathing into the mic, dude? Sorry about that. Breaks off. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Re rolling. I didn't, I uh, normally, like if there's a ground, I normally thought I'd get a PDC, but I guess we do need clearance. This taxiway is sketch. Got to come all the way over here by the wall. Man, we need a flyby cam so bad. Look at that. You see that, uh, just that little thunderhead there starting to build or like a, what is it, a cumulonimbus cloud? so correct for this part of the world the part of the country here in the u.s just like over the water you'll see these individual thunderheads just start building up on the departure it's awesome spirit 357 can you make sure you squawk mo charlie roger will squawk mo charlie for uh, Kex or uh, spirit wings 357 thank you oh yeah the auto mode uh, i don't know if it's I, maybe they don't pick up auto mode maybe on this I think that's happened a couple of times. Uh, we're gonna we're actually gonna lock them at zero if I can, Meaty Walrus. I'm gonna actually see if I can find that failure, and then we'll lock them at zero. All right, so Tango Eight Hotel Five, Juliet. We'll make a left on Hotel Five out to Juliet. Let's do a flight control check. Full up, full down, neutral, full left, full right, and neutral, a rudder. I can't get it to it. That's so funny. Full left. Uh, yeah, the pedal disconnect doesn't work. Full right, neutral, which is a shame because I really like having it on the uh, tiller. Here comes Tango 5, auto brakes max, takeoff config check, PWS on, boom, boom, boom. Make a left turn oh, right here. Here is Hotel Fiverr. Clear left, coming left. VATSIM needs mode C from pushback. It's a way to sort out to sort out real world pilots and give them a hard time. <laughs> Thanks, man. Ooh, okay, a little bit of light chop here on the ground. We're not in Delta though. <laughs> the rookie pilot, no clearance, no mode C. Who trained you? I know, man. I know. Federal government trained me. You should be concerned. Advise all aircraft on the sea. Ground will be going off the line uh, in about five minutes. All right, everything is complete. We're ready to go up to two, three. Uh, he did give us a departure altitude, but what was the initial altitude he gave us? I wrote it down, put it in chat. What would I give us? What did I do? Did I not enter it in the chat? I thought I did. Spearing 317, go ahead and monitor the Unicom 122.8. Have a good flight. Over to Unicom, thanks for the ATC. We'll talk to you next time for uh, Spear Wings 357. All right, over to Unicom. We out. That's all right. We're going to leave 230 up there. The speed bumps made to control taxi speeds for Southwest. Exactly. 4,000. All right, well, he's offline now. Look at that palm tree just sitting over there. That's so cool. Did I find out how to get the full engine sound? Benny, Benny, no, man. I have not. I think it's, uh... I think it's just the way it's modeled, man. Alaska 559, man. Thank you for your continued support. 12 months, man. Got your captain bars. 
Alaska 559. Thanks so much for your continued support, man. All right. There is the EMAS. Uh, EMAS is uh, basically designed to stop Southwest from going off the airport property. But no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a runway system that helps it collapses. It's actually like, think of it like really light concrete. So it collapses as you roll into it and slows you down. But really nice to see that they modeled out here. That's a really nice rendition. For Lauderdale traffic, uh, Spearwings 357 lining up for a 10 right. Lauderdale. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. Let's go taxi light on. I need a switch panel. If I could just buy an Airbus light switch panel, it'd be perfect. This is going to be an interesting departure because the runway looks very bumpy. I mean, just look at this. Like, it doesn't look... I mean, there's a hill there in real life, but I'm a little bit nervous for Microsoft to experience this. Uh, I don't know. I hope we don't crash here. Wow, I, I cannot line up this airplane. I don't know what's up with that. We're going to be super light. Hopefully we can get off before we get to the end of the run, that little bump thing. But All right, we're set. Are you guys ready? Spool them up 50. Here we go. Oh, I've never done it from outside. Yoga! Oh, <laughs> that actually sounded really good. Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust is blue. Wow, that sounded good from the outside. Thrust set, neutral by 100, check. V1, rotate. That is a fast takeoff, folks. Positive rate, gear up. Navin. Fly by. Goodbye, Lauderdale. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, V1. Thanks for your vast knowledge of the Airbus. Got me feeling like I can get type rated with just my private license. Thrust Climb Climb Model Thrust. Vedic, thank you so much for the $3 dono, man. I appreciate those, man. That Those kind of words, dude. Thank you for your support. Yep, that's what I'm here for, man. You can be V1 type rated. Look at this departure. Look at the water hitting the sand. Don Vedic, that's what I'm here for, man. Thank you for your uh, continued support. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Hey, the, over the hotel, I literally just was at the hotel over here, guys. Hold on, we gotta find it. Let's go flap zero. Hold on, I'm gonna go back to autopilot here because I wanna look for this hotel. So that's fine, we're gonna turn around. I have control. Let's go. No autopilot engaged. Stand by. Okay, that was weird. Autopilot one. So there is a hotel that I was just at. Where are you? I think it's right here. I'm pretty sure I was just at this hotel. Awesome. That is an awesome departure view right there. See, the scenery in a stream is going to make me buy it right now. Hey, man, this... I don't know. I mean, X-Plane 12 put a little thing out about water today or whatever, like some something on the shorelines. Look at that water. Hmm? Does that not look real? in 26 months your official v1 captain status bars thank you so much and what's up v1 new sub badges slick thank you dylan that is shout out to tom pasco for creating those you guys are awesome thank you for your continued support man you have reached a v1 status welcome on board 
Nick DE, my curves are at minus 14, both sides. Minus 14 on pitch and roll. All right, we're nine, climbing up to 10. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna, we don't have a lot of time on this flight, so we're just gonna climb straight up to 230, which we are. And there's about 10,000, so we'll get the lights off. Oh, strobe should've came on. I left the strobe on, fake pilot, forward call. I just can't get enough of this view. I, I'm gonna be heads down a lot this stream, but let's just enjoy this, these clouds. There's our 10,000 acceleration. Can we just take a minute to enjoy this? Because we're gonna be heads down for a minute here on the stream doing a no flap landing, but the lighting in the sim, oh my. It looks just like a Steve Okanevo vlog. <laughs> Might have been, Tom. I, I don't know what that was all about. That obviously was something, didn't like something that I had. I'm probably too far off the flight director command. Look at that. That's, uh, what's that one there? They do not supposed to, you can confuse that airport for Miami. Michael, I'm right there with you, man. Booting up X-Plane has been really, really hard for me. These clouds are so Florida too. Like you just have a beautiful sunny day and you get these real low level popcorn clouds. And then you get these, just a little bit of uh, thunderstorm buildup in every now and then you get those sun showers as they call them. Just so, so real looking, so nice. Opalaka, I think that was what it is. Real world needs a graphics update. Exactly, Ben. Okay. We're climbing 230. I'm going to see. Uh, it's a super short flight, so real life, I come up here, turn the seatbelt sign off too, let them roam, because we don't have a lot of time. Let's go ahead and look at the failures. Let me turn the sim down a tad. I don't know if I can lock it. Let's go here. Manual failures. Flight controls. I'm gonna hold this just so I don't set up the wrong one. SFCC one and two. That's it, slat flap channel. I think if we fail both of those, we're done. Non-resettable, we don't wanna do that. Elevator jam. We don't want to mess with that. Benny, Benny. Dude, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. He says, uh, you need to turn off the hear phone simulations and the spatial sound. I have both of those off, man. On Microsoft, it will activate every sound on the Phoenix. Benny, Benny, thank you so much, man. Yes, I do have both of those off. Headphones off and spatial sound off. Uh, I have them both off. I know what it sounds like. I can hear the startup. But it's still not, still not what I uh, would consider uh, optimal. But thank you for your $10 super chat, man. I appreciate that. I will also triple check those settings after the stream, but I'm pretty positive I've already, uh, I've already checked them. But thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. All right, so we could do, that's a surface lock, alignment fault. If we do SFCC one and two, we'll just do it above Oh, let's go ahead and set standard. Standard set once, twice, and for phantom. Uh, what are we gonna do? Let's just do it above 22,000. 22, one, two, three. Arm failure and SFCC two above 22,000. So if I fail both of those flap channels, Theoretically, we're going to be at flap zero, and I don't, I don't know how it's going to s simulate this failure. I don't know if it, we're going to get an ecam here or what. So let's just see what happens. It's supposed to go off when we go through twenty-two thousand feet. Your poor Airbus. What will it do to make you feel <laughs> fail so much? Although I do find it enjoyable. I'm glad you enjoy it. This is going to be very interesting. I, I am very interested to see how this pans out for us when we do a no-flap landing here. But I'm glad you're enjoying the content. It's in the. I, there's a guy I love watching. Uh, Grantham, 
he's a guy that uh, does a lot of shooting and uh, weapon reviews, and he always says, in for science. We're going to do this for science. Okay. Oh, that's not really what I wanted. Okay, I have control. Trust lock. Oh, boy. We just went into alternate law. I have control. I can have the bird. We're in thrust lock, so I'm going to go ahead and get my thrust back. Let's go ahead and level the airplane. I was not anticipating going into an SFC. I guess that, that would be correct. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream because uh, it looks like I'm going to be heads down for the duration of the flight. <laughs> I'm going to get us at least in the right direction here. All right, auto flight, autopilot off. Clear auto flight. We're an alternate law, so we're not going to have any autopilot, right? I can't even go autopilot too. That's correct. All right, so that is set. We're just going to try to hold it here. Uh, flight control flaps fault. When below VFE, flaps lever recycle. Slats fault recycle. Okay. Alternate law. Protections lost, max speed 320 knots. Clear flight control, clear flight control. Auto flight, auto thrust off, clear auto flight. Status, stop status, okay. Uh, we'll just be like Orlando or Jacksonville Center, Spearwings 357, declaring an emergency. Uh, we'd like to request direct to Orlando at this time. We have a uh, flight control fault. Uh, we'll get back to you. Like, all right, uh, Spearwings 357, you're cleared, present position, direct to Orlando. Uh, if you need a heading, it's about 345. Block altitude, your discretion between flight level 200 and 250. Okay, so we got a block altitude between 20 and 25. I'm going directly to Orlando. We don't have autopilot, that's fine. Our flight director is flashing because it's not available. We'll go FD off. No, nope, flight directors will remain off for the flight. So I'm using the bird mode here. Just kind of keep me level. I got a block altitude from 20 to 25. Remember, aviate, navigate, communicate. So we're gonna fly the airplane, we're pointed in the right direction. That's the first step. The second step, let's actually set up for uh, some type of landing, right? So let's go ahead and go to our landing data. And let's go ahead and do MCO. Let's just do apply the METAR. Uh, we've got dry conditions in Orlando, 08014. Landing weight is going to be probably, worst case scenario, 125,000 pounds. So 125.0, enter that. Manual landing, uh, we're going to do maximum manual brakes, flaps. We're going to work about our, uh, we're going to look at our failures for that. We're going to do max reverse, auto thrust off, slats and flaps, flaps and slats at zero. Note, flap lever in position one required due to failure. Okay. And we'll talk about why that is. That is set. Flight controls. Alternate law, direct law, uh, any of these apply. Okay. So we're going to be an alternate law. That applies. We'll be in direct law when we put the gear down. All right. That's a rough estimate there. Now, will it, I thought it would calculate it. Oh, I got to select the runway. One eight, right. Oh boy, nine thousand feet available for landing. All right, we are going to land one eight right. Correct. We are going to land one eight right. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of a right turn here. And our approach for Spearwings 357, we'd like to request descent down to uh, 1, 2,000. Uh, that is approved for Spearwings 357. Okay, so I'm going to dial in 12. I'm going to start us coming down a little bit early, but I'm just going to do a real shallow descent. I just want to be in a shallow descent down towards Orlando. Our speed is fine, we're about 250 knots, 70% on the N1s, 500 feet per minute. We'll give it a little bit more, maybe go about three degrees. 
That's fine. This said we're, we've got to fly the airplane first or else we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So we're going the right way. Okay, that is set. We're going to put position in flap one. We'll talk about that. Uh, but because I'm single pilot, again, let's just get some basic stuff done here with uh, the arrival and approach into Orlando. So Orlando, I'm going to just load up the approach chart for 18 right, looking at the runways. Uh, actually, we do ground charts. 20-9 so you can see so all of these available 12,000 18 right is 12,004 feet we're gonna land on 18 right it is it's a 12,000 foot long runway I would like to land on 18 left but there's no approach for that that's fine we were not even really gonna be using the approach uh, method so we know we've got the long runway with 18 right One eight right here. One eleven nine, one eighty five, and two ninety four. Aircraft drift a little bit. Let's go ahead and get her back where we need to go. One eleven nine. Perf data two fifty four. Next phase. Next phase. Next phase. Uh, two fifty four. Keep on coming down. All right, let's go back to our landing information. Winds were 080 at 14, 30, 07. 080 at 14, 30.07 in the meter. Temperature is 30. Okay, that stuff is done. I want to go, I just want to simulate, just to clean up my own box here. Let's put direct rides in the box. We'll insert that. All right. Status. Read status. I'm going to pick up my rate of descent here. Yeah, there's no track. That's good. All right. Let's go ahead and pick up our rate of descent about three degrees down. Max B, 320 knots. Approach procedure. Use flap one. So we're going to select flap to position one, center tank pumps one, or center tank pumps off. So our center tank pumps off. At 300 feet, oh, I'm sorry, VREF plus 60. So let's look at that. We'll go to the perf page, and I'm skipping a, some real world procedures here. I'm skipping a lot of them. Center tank pumps off. All right, that's clear. Clear. Associated. Approach phase says VAP is 130. We need to add VREF 60 knots. That's 190 knots. That is a lot of speed. All right, so we got 190 knots set. Target speed at 300 feet HEL is VREF plus 50. So I'm actually gonna dial that back. So it's gonna actually be 180 knots, 180 knots. Landing distance procedure apply. That's a very lengthy procedure. We just did it here in the Phoenix EFB. We need 9,052 feet. Call it 10,000 plus feet available for landing. We're on a landing on a 12,000 foot runway. So we do not have a ton of, uh, of, ton of extra stuff here, okay? We're about 10.5. We don't have a lot of leeway. So landing distance procedure has been applied and it's complete. We have a couple idles. Engine one approach idle only, engine two approach idle only. Alternate law, we're flying the aircraft in alternate law. When landing gear is lowered, we will go into direct law. So we should see a used man pitch trim pop up here on the PFD when we lower the landing gear. That means we're gonna be in direct law. We can expect very twitchy flight control moments or, or movements really when we move our side stick around. And you know, I'll pull up the tiller cam when we get down there. But the reason why the aircraft is gonna be very twitchy is because in direct law, you have a direct relation relationship between side stick deflection and flight control movement. So there is, it's a one-to-one. -one. It You move it an inch, you're moving the flight controls an inch. Like it is, a, it, and in the sim, it is also very twitchy and that's how the real aircraft behaves. So keep that in mind. That's gonna happen when we lower the landing. Center tank fuel is unusable. We're aware of that, our center tank pumps are off. Okay, in-op systems. 
in op systems flight control uh, protections lost slats flaps autopilot one and two is out auto thrust is out cat two and center tank pumps are out clear status clear status all right now time and performance permitting we're going to go to the comm procedure and we'll do some external steps but again since i am doing the place i'm in the place of uh, two pilots up here. We'll, we're gonna first. We got to loop in the flight attendants, right? And as we go through 17.5, let's set our altimeters 30.07. Remember, that's the first thing we're always doing. 30.07 is set. Fly in the airplane. We gotta fly the airplane first. 30.07 is set. All right. I'm leaving my ND kind of blank, like or just with these dotted lines here. This tailwind's pushing us just a tad to the left, but we're fine. Our speed is getting a little bit fast for my comfort, so let's go ahead and walk it back, that power. Let's bring in about 50% on the N1s. All right, so at this point, we do have to let the flight attendants know. So we'll give them a call. And it's like, what's going on? Uh, what's going on, Captain? All right, all right uh, you guys are probably unaware of this now, but we do have a significant mechanical failure now with the aircraft. Our slats and flaps are no longer working. Uh, so we're going to have to prepare for an emergency landing. I do, uh, I, we're not going to divert. We're heading to Orlando. That is the primary airport um, that we're going to go to. It's got a long runway, so we're going to stick with that. I do anticipate using the bra brace command upon landing. The landing that you're going to feel is going to be very, it's going to be very firm. Uh, we're we're going to be coming in very fast. You're going to see things a little bit differently out the window. Do not be alarmed. That's just part of the procedure. We're going to be coming in very fast, and the landing is going to be very, very firm. I'm also going to ask emergency vehicle services uh, to meet us after landing, so you can expect a flight attendant station command from me once we get on the ground. All right. Uh, if I have time, I'll, I'll give you a, a heads up here when we're about five minutes from landing. But at this time, prepare the cabin for arrival and start reviewing your emergency procedures. All right. Thank you, Captain. Uh, that would be pretty much what I'd tell the flight attendant. I uh, would be talking to dispatch as well. And we also need to identify, um, or we're going to have to talk to ATC. They'd probably be hindering us. Okay, what's your fuel on board? What's your souls on board? They want to know how much fuel is on the airplane. They want to know how many people are on the airplane. And we are declaring an emergency officially with them. So I will tell them, to, hey, we'll have emergency vehicle system standing by. Uh, we're going to be coming in very fast. You know, we're the, the most probable cause for danger is going to be a, a fire in the wheels. Okay, if you get a wheel well fire after landing, the brakes would be extremely hot. You're right next to the fuel tanks, so that is uh, pretty much kind of what they want to know. What type of failure you got? We're going to be stopping on the runway. If their fire breaks out, it's very possible that an evacuation would ensue, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to the fire marshal once we get on the ground. So that's kind of the briefing to you and kind of what I'd give the ATC in a roundabout way. All right. So now that that's all done, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look here in the com and I wanted to show you guys something that's important. That's an important note, and we're gonna see how the Phoenix handles this. And I'm just gonna keep on coming down. Uh, and uh, Spear Wings 357, you can descend and maintain uh, 10,000 feet. At pilot's discretion. So we got 10,000 in the window. All right. So now that we've got our performance done, we've briefed the flight attendants. Uh, dispatch knows emergency's been declared. Airplane is flying. We have additional time here. This is when you would go into your comm procedure because the comm or the, the, the manuals that you use, FCOM or whatever it is, your company manual. You need to know. That is a you know a time permitting event. They always fly in the airplane first. We're navigating, communicating. If we got time, we're going to go to the comp because there could be some additional info that's very important to you. All right. Basically, what it says it's um, use the uh, flight control or both flat channels fail. We're an alternate law, and then we have a status page. It tells you what we just read. And then it goes through the approach procedure, and it says use flap one. The reason we use flap one, even though we know we're not gonna get any flaps to deploy, we must use flap one because if we go around, we wanna have go around mode available. The aircraft, we wanna be able to just have like a in to go around mode and it'll be fine. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's why we use flap one. All right, a couple other things we have to do. Center tank pumps off, jip whiz flap mode button off. So up to the overhead, jip whiz, Flap mode, push button, off. Approach speed, VREF plus 60. 
Okay. Now it doesn't say to, uh, to turn off anything else. I'm also going to turn off glide slope mode just because I know I'm not going to be following it, and we have a glide slope loaded in the box there. Um, there's a couple other notes here that we're going to look at as we descend down. Uh, landing gear, blah blah blah. That's good. If flaps are in fix zero, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in this procedure that we do in the sim in real world that we're just going to skip for the sake of time. But I like our weight. We're pretty light. We've got enough fuel if we have to go around. We're at 7,000. Real world, I would probably hold until I could burn off probably another 2,000 pounds, all right? I'd probably make this approach with about 5,000 pounds of fuel on board. That way I'm very comfortable with the go around. Um, and and 2,000 pounds is gonna be, uh, I wouldn't say negligible, but it's, uh, it, it can definitely help with, with some of your landing distance when you get up to about 2,000 pounds. So I, in real life, I would go down about 5,000 pounds fuel on board, shoot the approach. And if we have to go around, we know we got plenty of gas to come around and configure. But for the sake of time, we're going to go ahead and go down to 7,000. And uh, we're going to just go ahead and set up for the approach here as well. We're going to clean up the box. And realistically, I'm going to set this up so in real life, we would just do 1-8 right. And we're going to, but we wouldn't load the ILS. We would actually just load 1-8 right from the McDo. And we would just go insert. And... Oh, that's because we're below 10. That's all right. Number aviate, navigate, communicate. Power is coming to idle. That's fine. Let's go ahead and just set uh, set 5,000. I would want ATC to give us a really long vector. I'd want to be vectored out far from the airport so we could have a nice long approach to get stable. Because remember, it, it's going to be, uh, you don't have a lot of shots at this. You only really got two good two good shots so I'm kind of on an extended down one here there's our center line fix so I want to just go ahead and clear from P pause let me do this uh, we'll go clear parks clear Hans clear Patman clear that insert all right so now I have a center line fix and the center line fix is going to give me just a little three degree path down to the runway now you could use the ILS but you're going to be getting those uh, you may not have an ILS, and I think in the type ride, they actually do it to an airport where you don't have an ILS because they want you to use the center line fix, and you should have a green vertical descent donut there. But we're above 250, below 10, that's fine. We're emergency aircraft, we're gonna take it down to 5,000 feet. At this point, I'm also gonna go ahead and activate, confirm the approach phase. We know our VAP is 180. We're looking for 190 knots. So I'm gonna set 190. And then until we're, what is it, 300 feet. So if I pull up the status page, one, 190 until 300 feet. So because I took out that, I'm going to put 300 in the barrow, which is really 300 plus field elevation. Let's call it 400 feet in the barrow. That's going to give me a minimum call at 400. And that is when I need to know I need to start slowing to 180 knots. All right. And I can also take the center line fix direct to CF, extend the center line, boom, insert that, pull for heading again, and now we've got an inf infinitely long runway. And look, we even have a, our little vertical deviation donut. All right. So is everybody caught up? Are you ready for this? <laughs> I haven't even seen the airplane outside yet. It looks dang good. So there's Orlando. I'm actually going to get Flight Recorder up for this too because I'd be curious to see what it looks like in replay. So let's get Flight Recorder up. All right. I'm going to take it out 5,000 feet. I'm actually going to descend to 3,000 now. Let's do 3,000. I don't know why I pulled it. I just I felt like I had to. Uh, thrust is at idle. We're going to go ahead and keep coming down. Let me go ahead and put you on the, the yoke cam because we are hand flying. So a couple of things we're looking for here for simulation. When the gear comes down, we should see the aircraft go into direct law. We'll have a used man pitch trim on the PFD. I should have a pretty sensitive uh, flight control response with the aircraft. 
and in real life the landing rollout is very aggressive i mean it takes a long time to slow down but i don't know how ground friction is in microsoft so we're going to put that to the test chris stuper says i'm lost but i'm enjoying it a lot all right well i'm glad you're enjoying it i'm kind of lost myself but here we go it is what it is i'm actually going to have to do this in real life here in about another month so uh, this is good practice for me I'm going to go all the way out to 3,000, and then I'm going to turn around for a nice, long, extended final, and then I will start slowing down. Because remember, we don't have flaps, so it's also going to take a long time for the aircraft to slow down, and I don't really want to just drop the gear way out there, because if I do that, now I'm going to be flying in direct law way out on final. And it's just, it can be uncomfortable for the passengers, because I tell you what, in the sim, in the real sim, in direct law, this airplane is extremely sensitive. It's it's like a default 172 in X-Plane 11 with no curves. I mean, it is like really pitchy and, and rolly. So we're going to try it. Good luck for all counting on. Thank you, sir. Let me actually make sure. One thing I wanted to note while we're landing here. If you guys have this with the Warthog stick, my FS Project sticks, periodic, periodically check and make sure that your screw is nice and, nice and firm there. Just finger tight. You don't want to over tighten it of course, onto your Warthog, but I found over time on my side stick with the Warthog base, it that mounting, uh, that little rotary screw that you have under here can work itself loose. So just make sure over time that you, uh, that you set that. Okay, so here we go. We're coming down 190 knots. I'm going to put the flap lever into position one. We know nothing is going to happen, but that is so we have a go around available. We're at 3,000 feet. We're below the vertical deviation donut. I'm going to go ahead and start my left turn towards the airport once we get on final we'll start replay we're not going to drop it at 300 feet christian but uh i mean look at our look at our vls i mean this is going to be wild guys I, I won't even get 180. i have my spear wings 357 do you have orlando in sight that's affirmative. We have Orlando in sight. Spearwing 357. Spearwing 357. You're clear to land. 18 right. Crash find rescue will be standing by. Got this. Spearwing 357. All right. So we're coming around. I'm just going to go ahead and start. Hell, I don't want to start recording yet. That'll be a long way out. Ooh, a little bit of Loctite. Callum, yeah, I was going to do that, but I also want to be able to take it off, you know? So that's why I didn't use the Loctite on there. MCO ground is online. I hope we don't get in trouble. I might just disconnect from VATSIM for uh, VATSIM purposes. Yeah, when you drop the gear on the space shuttle, there is no going back. We'll keep trickling down here. Remember, you're going to come in low, and, and uh, I, I would tell the, the first officer, give the brace command also. We're going to give the brace command on touchdown. So he'll do the brace command at now four, 300 feet or so. I would do one last call to the flight attendants, be like, hey, Susie. All right, we're going to be on the ground here in about two minutes. It's going to be fast. You'll hear the brace command. And uh, stand by for flight attendant stations upon touchdown. All right, we're ready. We're all set to go, Captain. All right. All right, so 190 is what we're looking for for approach. 180 at 300 feet. 2,500. Runway is in sight. You can expect to come in at four reds. There will be no flare. You are just arresting the descent enough to prevent structural damage of the aircraft. That is all we are doing. All right, runway's in sight. Record is on, so I can stop looking over there. We're on speed. Lights are on. We're clear to land. Um, actually, we don't want to be super, super low, so I'm going to level here about 2,000. Alarm the spoilers. And the seatbelt signs would have definitely been on. On an auto. I don't know why they're there. All right. trickling down look at that speed though I mean 200 knots and this is a you're you don't have a lot of room to play with here 
10 knots fast over the threshold, you might put it in the dirt. So I'm going to come back. <laughs> Rotor fib sounds like enough. That sounds like your landings. All right, I'm going to go ahead and lower the landing gear now because I want to start getting a feel for the aircraft in direct law. So I don't want to do it last minute, but the gear's coming down. We're going to get a little bit of thrust up here as the gear comes down, the drag gets on the airplane. A little bit of power. There it is. Use man pitch trim. Clear the caution. That's associated. Wow, look at the pitchiness. That is so real. Flight control, direct law, man pitch trim use. All right, clear flight control. Clear flight control. And the reason you don't want to do that at like 100 and, or 250 One, knots, another reason is your trim is going to get locked in. So if you... Uh, power, power. So if you were to lower the gear... At 250 knots, it's going to lock your trim there. So you're going to be doing a lot of manual trimming. Right now, my trim is set for 190. Because I don't have an FO, I'm going to dial at 180 now. We know at 300 feet AGL, we want to be at 180, which is right on the stall speed. Oh, boy, we want to be on 180 right, don't we? That's right. You're clear to land all runways. <laughs> I want this one. It's one foot longer. Thank you, Team Vodka. After all that, I'm on the wrong runway, but you're right. Associated. So that, I think, theoretically would have been pulled off. Uh, no messing around. We're 400 feet. Brace command. Brace, brace, brace. See how twitchy it is in pitch? That feels, I mean, that feels really good. A little bit faster. Come back on the power. I see that tree. I got to avoid that tree. I'd like to be lower. Power's coming off the airplane now. Stall, stall. Check. 50, 40, stall, stall. 10, 5. Spoilers. Get on the brakes. On the brakes. Oh. <laughs> We're going to use reverse to aircraft stop. Set the parking brake. Flight attendant stations. All right, so now we would be sitting here and uh, uh, realistically, I mean, that was... Um, I mean, that was actually, that worked out really well for how light we are. Uh, let's look at the brake temps. They would be, oh yeah, these temps would be, the brake temperature is, needs to be worked on, but it would be very, very hard. So flight attendants are at stations. We're sitting here and they would say, okay, the, flight, the fire marshal is going to call you up on ground. He's going to say, um, Spirit Wings 357, uh, we're approaching your aircraft from the rear. Uh, we're looking for any signs of fire or smoke to stand by. So they're coming around from the road. They might say something like, uh, Spirit Wings 357, we've observed uh, smoke and fire from the uh, right side of the aircraft. Uh, we're foaming your aircraft now. And at that point, I'm probably going to start shutting down. And we're thinking about the evacuation is, is probably close. Um, let's say, like, if, let's just say for fun, which wouldn't, this would not be fun. Let's say a fire broke out. And the fire marshal is like, yeah, you've got you've got a big fire on both tires now, and it's approaching the wings. Uh, we recommend you evacuate aircraft left, okay, or something like that. Um, so at that point, now we need to evacuate. So now it's um, evacuation checklist. We pull that out, and we basically go through it. And matter of fact, stand by. I have one. I'm going to go through it. I'm going to go through it with you right here because I want to do this. I actually want to do it. So give me a second. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna evacuate. Aircraft parking brake, stop on. Now this is, a, this is a dance between the captain and the first officer. Crew pay A, flight attendant stations. We already did that. ATC, notify. Tower Spear Wings 357, we're gonna evacuate on the runway. Uh, Delta P, uh, has not been used. We can skip. Engine master, one and two, off. Engine master, one and two, off. 
engine fire push buttons, engine and APU, push. So engine one fire push button, confirm. Engine two fire push button, confirm. Agents, engine and APU discharge if necessary. We don't have any fire in the engines or the APU, so I'm not, and I should have pushed that one too, I'm not gonna discharge the agents, okay? But those are both set. If evacuation is required, evacuate, 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 and push command on. So here we go, that's coming on. And I'd be right here, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. And then the flight attendants would go through their uh, evacuation. And in fact, I think we can do evac, confirm. And the evacuation would begin. And then if it wasn't required, remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. So I think in the future, they're going to, <laughs> I like how we have ground power connected. I think they're gonna include maybe slides and maybe some more evacuation. But that is, uh, that's how it would, that's kind of how it would go down right there. So that's something you don't want to hear. If the fire marshal approaches you and you say, normally you're looking for, okay, that's, uh, everything looks good. You can taxi to the ramp or we'll follow you to the ramp or the gate area. Might have to go to a hot break area to cool down. But um, other than that, it's, uh, if you hear, hey, you're on fire and, and uh, we you know, recommend you evacuate, then that's, that's pretty scary. So uh, that's how it goes. You basically secure the engines, and I don't want to listen to that. So I'm curious, though. That's going to conclude that emergency. <laughs> I am... Oh, no, I was still recording. Dang it. All right, I was still recording. But I, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try something. I'm going to reset the aircraft state. So, oh, man, I forgot. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm going to disconnect from Vatsim. I'm parked on this dude's runway. Sorry, man. Uh, so let's go to panel states. I want to just go ready state and then I want to activate the replay. Ricardo says, that was a pleasure to watch a professional master of his aircraft. Captain, thank you so much, Ricardo. Glad you enjoyed that. That was, I'm glad you guys wanted to see that. Thank you for sticking around and, uh, and voting for that because, you know, there's a lot of stuff real world in the book there that we probably skipped over, but it's kind of benign for, for watching it from a flight sim standpoint. But the fact of the matter is, it's fun to be able to simulate this stuff here on stream and be engaged with everybody that, that likes to see it. So, uh, good deal, good deal. Glad you guys enjoyed it. I'm trying to get, uh, I don't know if I can get the evac stuff to go away. Uh, there we go, that's good. And let's go ahead and see what the replay does. But Voitech says, Captain, could you show me how to dis how to change destination and flight? I'm messing up with secondary flight plan. I think it must be similar. The easiest way, Voitech, to change your destination in flight, hit the L1 key with any on any waypoint here, and then there's a little option that says um, new destination and put that. That is the easiest way, in my opinion, to just do an immediate destination change. If you don't have an alternate or maybe you're going to a different alternate, uh, you hit the left line select key and then there's a little box that says new destination. And then you put it in there and then you select it from the bottom just like you would uh, any other time. So, all right, let's go ahead and watch this replay. Let's see what happens here. So we're coming in with uh, Flaps zero, flaps and slats zero at 180 knots. This will be fun. Let's watch this. But thank you, Voitech, for your support, man. I appreciate that. I hope that answers your question. Tranquil Bees, what's up, says, would love to see a buy the book emergency before your recurrent training. Really cool to see how you go down a fully focused view of Tranquil Breeze. I, indeed, I will be doing that. I call those uh, uh, check ride prep streams where I'll actually go through a full check ride prep. Uh, the chat is limited to members only. And because it's one of those streams where I'm really going to be disengaged from the chat pretty much 95, 98% of the stream. So I do those and I will be doing those here in the Phoenix in upcoming weeks. I just got to get my uh, check ride scheduled. They actually are my recurrent uh, schedule. They, they pushed me, I think, back to like a grace month or something. So it's, it was supposed to be in the next uh, two weeks or so, but they've moved it. But I will indeed do that uh, by the book, by the T, full check ride profile, and not just emergency stuff. We'll do some normal stuff. You'll see a uh, RNAV approach. You'll see a uh, probably an FLS approach in this one. And you'll see an ILS. You'll see an auto land. And then we'll do some actual stalls. We'll do some alternate direct law maneuvering. And then a V1 cut, which everybody loves that V1 cut. That's an engine failure right at V1. And 
it's uh, we'll pop an engine at V1 and go around and hand fly an ILS from there. So that is in the pipeline. If you enjoy that, if you want to see that stuff, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure your notifications are on because, again, I am an airline guy in real life and I don't have a set schedule. So uh, sometimes I just do last minute streams. So if your notifications aren't on, you might miss something really good that you want to watch. So appreciate all the support. Let's check out this uh, no flap landing. But I mean, you could hear, I mean, we were right on the VLS coming in. Look at the AOA. I mean, the AOA is pretty good. I mean, but that is just a weird view, isn't it? To see everything up like that. Nice wing flex there. Best wing flex of any sim ever confirmed on this airplane right here. But, mm. What would you do if you were called during a flight and ATC said that a solar storm would hit your region before the plane landed? Uh, we turn around, definitely. <laughs> Mr. Culture Shirt, welcome back to Commercial Pilot, sir. Thank you. Uh, so we're coming in, and I, it was a little bit funky. Those trees aren't there in real life, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. I, ideally, I want to be three reds. The ideal approach is three reds on the pappies. Um, you could go to four, but three is ideal. You can see we're in direct law now. So hold three reds all the way in. Look at the lighting on this water right now is the most realistic lighting I've ever seen right now in Florida. If you've ever been to Florida, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The shadow of the clouds, but it's still sunny outside. This is spot on. All right, let's see how we did here from landing. We do have full reverse. We do have spoilers. We just do not have uh, flap. So, I mean, look how fast the, you're coming in over the ground. No flare, just arrest the sink rate to prevent damage. Immediately get the, uh, interestingly enough, only reverser two deployed. That's interesting. I don't know why that is. Did that happen up front? It looks like it's a replay bug. That's fine. Well, let's go ahead and stop. Let's rewind it. Let's watch the touchdown. Oh, yes, sir. We've already got more likes than views, so I don't even, can't even <laughs> ask y'all again to hit the like button. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. We're gonna get sail playing here. And I'm about ready to go home and get something to eat. Listen to those engines. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know why the rat's out now. That wouldn't be, that was, uh, it's obviously a replay bug. But there you go, you can see the rat. That's a Ram Air Turbine. Doing its Ram, Ar Ram Air Turbine things. Probably because we were in the emergency configuration on the ground. See how twitchy, see how twitchy the airplane's moving? That is so realistic in direct law. So realistic. We just cleared the trees. So here, yeah, just a little, I mean, you're not even flaring. All I'm doing is trying to get that descent rate under control. We're down, get the airplane on center line. You wanna be par parallel on the center line there. A little bit twitchy. <laughs> you can see it rocking. I think that's just, it doesn't rock that hard in, uh, in real life. It's a little bit easier to control, but because you're full on the brakes, it is, uh, you know, keeping it straight is a challenge because you're full on the brake pedal. So you kind of have that, you lose that fine control of just a little bit of pressure because you're standing on the brake pedals. And when you're standing on those brake pedals, it's kind of hard to keep that nose on the center line. <laughs> Robinson Santana, thank you, dude, for the $10 donation, man. Get a burger, Captain, and a cold beer. Robinson, I'm gonna do exactly that I think I'm 100% I'm gonna go home I'm gonna fire up the grill we have burgers I'm gonna have a beer I'll post a picture in the V1 Discord for y'all because I had a lot of fun tonight thank you so much for hanging out with me on this one I'm gonna wind you guys all the way back you can watch it all the way in here 190 knot final approach speed into Orlando 1.8 left this has been a fun fun stream <laughs> I went to 700 likes but we only had like 400 people still here on the stream so that's just incredible thank you so much I will see you guys tomorrow Tomorrow, we are kicking off the official preliminary South America tour. We're gonna to be going down to Cancun. I won't be setting any failures, but I will have random failures on high for our flight to the infamous Cancun. Uh, we should be kicking off probably around 11 o'clock central. Might be a little bit later, might be noon. It might be the same time as today. So be sticking around. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day, evening, wherever you may be. I love you guys. I'm V1. Stay safe. See ya!
Well, that looks weird. 